Hi, welcome to Dash 28 Live. Um, I'm Brenton Williams. This is uh, Call to Arms, top table, final battle, uh, Call to Arms 5, between Steven, the Dervish Devonish, and Alex, Dr. Mayhem DDS, Koos. Um, say hi, guys. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Great. So um, with me also is Kyle Peach. Um, Jonathan Quayle and Tom Robbins. Sorry, his name plate says Q Dog, and I almost called him that um, to help do commentary. <laughs> That's I know my we're name. Getting, <laughs> we're getting started a little late on this, um, but hopefully you are able to stick with us and join us. Um, and we're going to jump straight into the armies. So let me bring up my screen, and we will start with Alex's army to walk us through. One second. Just to say, the delay delay wasn't the commentators. That's just so yeah. everybody's clear, right? Yeah. Not, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so we're gonna start with League of Rordia. So and Alex. So I've been playing League of Rordia the whole the whole tournament. This is kind of a mashup of my earlier round list and the stuff what I was using in rounds like three and onward. Um, so the two foot guard hordes and with indomitable will with a mounted scouts troop and then two honor guard with boots and caterpillar both with indomitable will I use using volley guns today three of them uh, duke with staying stone on the winged arales uh, a baron with the loot two wizards on pegasi uh, one with boomstick both just with lightning bolt, battle shrine, and then some top table reinforcements and flame bear regiment and seductress. Spicy, spicy allies there. And now we're going to switch over to the goblin army. Yeah, so start as every uh, goblin army does. Any any with any honor has uh, three rebel hordes. Uh, we've got the Luggett gangs next. Uh, two regiments. One of them has the Pathfinder and one troop of Luggett gang. They've been a staple in all my lists so far. Uh, trolls with Fury, great at sticking around and um, not wavering at key moments. Uh, two War Trombones, uh, which, yep, they not many people uh, take them anymore, but I reckon they've still got a lot of value in them. Uh, two more pub launches, which um, help support the Rebel. Uh, rebel units and the luggets by unloading on with pups. Three goblin blasters because you can never have enough goblin blasters. Uh, one wing it with the eye in the sky special rule, so giving elite to those more pup launches. King on chariot who's just fast and inspiring gets where he needs to be. Uh, two troll bruises, one with inspiring, so he doesn't just inspire the trolls, he also inspires everyone, and Blade of Slashing because it's good value. Magwar and Jos, another inspiring source, and I like to think of him as a mini vampire that um, doesn't like to get hit back. And Kuslo and Madfall, um, who's another fast uh, individual who is unit strength as well. Uh, that's 20 drops. Okay, nice. so we're going to jump back and go over to the UV battle screen. Just out of query, Stephen, is a, a goblins an army you've used a lot before? Uh, yes, I have. Um, so I took it to Clash of Kings uh, last weekend for Australia. Did okay. Um, found it very hard to keep track on the on the last games of the day. It was, it was a lot mm -hmm. of decisions to make with any, any goblin army um, where you've got lots of units and uh, lots of fiddly things going on. But uh, yeah, did all right with them. Great. So uh, we're going to now jump over to the QP. Um, you've set up for pillage. Uh, the tokens are all on the board. And we're going to walk through Alex's army. So starting sort of left to right. We have the Seductress and then the uh, Pathfinder Honor Guard and then the three Volley Guns, uh, Lightning Bolt 3 Wizard, the Duke on Winged Airless, the Strider. Uh, honor guard and then the scouts and then flame bearers and then on the right I have my two honor guard hordes with battle shrine baron and lightning bolt six okay great 
and then over to Steven. Yep, so on the on the left flank, as you said, um, troll, troll Bruiser with slashing, uh, Rabble Horde um, in front of a Luggage Troop and Blaster and King on Chariot. Uh, King on Chariot making sure they're all inspired in that little bubble. Uh, two uh, more pup launchers just staring down those volley guns uh, with a wing at close by uh, who won't be staying there for very long. Uh, another rubble horde uh, out there with two blasters behind it. Wasn't sure where to put that blaster on the left, um, but ended up there, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Magua and Joss um, giving some inspiring out to that centre area. Um, troll hordes um, in front of two war trombones. Hopefully they're able to give some cover where my rebel hordes are not able to do that with the uh, lightning bolt six coming in. And uh, Troll Bruiser giving inspiring and getting in the way, hopefully. Uh, Luggett gang with Pathfinder. And then on the right, we've got um, Kuslo and Madfall hoping to zoom up first turn. Uh, Rebel Horde and Luggett Troop Regiment. Great, sounds good. So quick question, how are you guys playing these obstacles? Yeah, so we're just playing the, the, the main straight section. Okay. So, um, so not, little... not the rubble or anything. I can. Um, sure. And any out. special rules for this badass with the pole arm sitting in the middle <laughs> of the table? Uh, between the building in the middle and not okay. the other stuff. Okay. Straightforward. Sounds good. Yep. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump into it again. If you have any questions for us, feel free to to ping us. But um, good luck to you both. Uh, any questions from the commentators, real quick? No, I mean, I know I didn't ask you, Alex, whether you played that army all the time, but I think we've seen you a couple of times use that army anyway, so we're fine. Yeah, Good luck. The game, game six with Veronia. <laughs> so. Consistency. It works, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, yeah. Good luck. And obviously, you know, top table, I don't want to see any terrible moves or anything like that. Um, no mistakes. We are going to rip it out of you. Right? No, no, we're holding back. Yeah, I want to see on this game, a draw. Everybody's happy then. <laughs> like a 10-10 draw, straight, straight up and down. Yeah. <laughs> just so stand you, and you, don't roll any dice. That's what he wants, yep. Yeah. <laughs> what we're all here to see. <laughs> well, you see the mistakes, it's just genius now. waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it. And, uh, yeah, you guys can head off and and roll your dice for first turn and do any scout moves and have fun. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Guys. Okay, they're gone. So now you can talk Finally. all the, all the trash yeah. you want about them. Lordy, yeah. <laughs> Is it, Tom, can you just do that background noise? Just continue just... background. Britain can just record it, loop it, play it for the whole stream. That's what the host does, right? Yeah, it's it's no problem. Uh, that is the host's job. Um, yeah, come on, get on with it. Go. <laughs> so uh, you guys saw their lists. We were talking before we were on air about the lists, but you're going to have to regurgitate some of that now. Um, so Kyle, Jonathan, Tom, like, what do you guys think? Uh, who would you? What army would you rather have on this battlefield? Who do you think set up to win here uh, with their lists and their deployment? Well, I'd rather have Rordia, but that's just because of goblins. <laughs> you can't just you can't just say that. You have to actually. What, what's wrong with goblins? Come on, come on. I mean, it's it's near it's nearly Saturday here. Do you have enough time in the day for us to talk about what's wrong with goblins? I think we've got plenty of time. Alex is playing. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, because the goblins won the roll off and are taking oh. first turn. So stuff will actually happen. Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, in all seriousness, no, I like how Alex, and I commented on this before, is like doing conventional stuff with Rodeo where he's got that big shooting element and he's got some very durable infantry, but he's doing it in a pretty unconventional way, right? He's got no cannons, he's got no pikes, but he's got foot guard and flame bearers and all those volley guns and... What's he got, like 15 lightning bolt? 15, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's 
similar to my base list anyway, my base list usually is three wizards. Uh, one of them's not mounted on a Pegasus, he's just normally mounted because he's got Bane Chan and Spiral Plasma. Um, so I'm usually running 18 Lightning Bolt. I've usually got three Volley Guns, I've usually got two on the guard. I've usually got a Dog of War and then a Foot Guard Horde. So, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know if he knows what he plays or not. Um, but there's. Honestly, like the dogs of war are like two hundred seventy one points, and you cap an item on on them. Um, and if you don't think you're playing against phalanx, uh, you know weak I units, and what's the point in dogs of war to pick foot guard because foot guard are really solid. Like they're such a good unit. Um, so it's, I mean, it's, it's and again, I always go volume rather than cannons anyway. Uh, I always have done. I've got like four cannons in a box. But they don't get used. I use volleyguns because volleyguns are just fun, far more fun. Um, Interesting. Okay. This, this, is, this is my point the list of this. Uh, Tom has actually played, you played Rodia to death, haven't you? Did you win the last call at Twans with Rodia? Is that pretty much what you used in the four, last call? Four of the six games were Rodia, yeah, and then two of them for Undead for Muckabouts. Yeah. I have to say, I, I do like the Rodian <laughs> army. Only because I don't know how this goblin army is going to work. I, I mean, I, I don't play. I haven't played many games against goblins, and I haven't played many games, which is to some people a blessing, apparently, Carl. Um, yeah, and then, uh, I, not seeing lots of like the the war engines at long range. He hasn't got a lot of pressure to kind of throw on to the enemy. So, by the looks of it, looking at his first movement, he's going for. Mm -hmm. He's going balls deep, isn't he? He is going, right, I'm going to put my stuff in front of you. What are you going to do about it? And then he's going to react. That's why he's, I think he's got so many blasters and trombones. Is he's going to be going, kill a unit rabble, I don't care. I'm going to hit you with you know, three or four units with uh, close range shooting and hopefully either kill you or reduce you to nothing. So... Right. It's definitely a much more aggressive combat-based goblin army than the goblin army where you've got all the artillery bang its wing its what'd you call it Tom? boring that's what i called it yeah the boring goblin well, this, army. One, this one this one's marginally more interesting but normal goblin army despite the fact that they're goblins and they should be fun because they're random and crazy and wacky normal goblin armies are boring this is better i like this mm -hmm. yeah so it's <laughs> for me what's interesting is it has a a, a lot of utility um, in different spots. It just has a lot of sort of efficient, none of it is like that single unit that's going to terrify you, but everything trades efficiently. Um, Apart from blasters the are, what's that? Apart from the rabble, but yeah, carry on. <laughs> well, they're cheap. That's they're, true. Actually, no, that is true. That is the true. the yeah. amount of points you have to spend to kill that much rabble uh, is a lot more than what they cost. Um, you have the Luggets, which they're not going to break a unit on their own normally, but 20 attacks on fours with crushing strength one and, and brutal is solid. Like you're, You have to respect you're, it. Yeah, yeah. You're putting damage on things. You have a little of everything, and all of it is kind of does its little job well. Blasters are incredibly efficient and hard to deal with, especially when there's three of them. You have the troll characters, which are, you know, just like sort of butcher flesh rippers and any of those kind right. of 40 mil ogre hero characters they're pain in the ass to deal with especially when they get in your lines it's just a lot of efficient combat units um with what like 20 drops or something ridiculous it's a large number of drops i think it's 20. and they're oh, all scoring aren't they There's, they he hasn't gone for the archetype or like uh, i'm gonna take wizards um, he hasn't taken the king with headstrong He's gone for all They're scoring. They're not all scoring, like, but a lot of them are. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. They're worried. Drops, but he's got mm -hmm. five of them aren't scoring. Yeah. yeah. Four or you five sort of take a are. look like the, the King on Chariot is just this incredibly, again, like efficient unit. Speed nine, nimble, crush one, thunderous one, seven attacks. Um, with a bow. With seven <laughs> with a, yeah, why not? With a bow. Um, okay, explain to me this, right? How does a goblin on chariot, goblin on chariot, right? You get seven attacks, a minotaur chariot. So this is a chariot pulled by a minotaur, right? With some kind of crazy herd character on the back. Get five attacks. I don't understand this. What's going on? What's going on? 
Um, anyway, so, carry on. So do you want um, the real answer? <laughs> yeah, I don't want the real answer. I just want it to change. <laughs> the, the real answer is because minotaurs are big and dumb and slow. <laughs> And goblins are fast and sneaky and will stab you seven times while the Minotaur is still trying to figure out how to hit you. So mm, yeah. That was yeah. better than my answer. Okay, Kyle. Go for it. Bring it. Oh, I was just going to blame, um, what's his name, Rob Berman? <laughs> <laughs> it's his fault. Is it just it's... the gentle pressure? Make it seven attacks. Oh, okay. No, no, the, not that the Minotaur isn't good enough, that the Goblin Chariot shouldn't have seven attacks. So like, that's we, ridiculous. Have we confirmed that Minotaur Chariots are pulled by Minotaurs and not chariots yes. that have Minotaurs in them? 100%. It's, a, it's 100% they are. I don't know why they're named that way, because you've got a great chief, chieftain on Minotaur Chariot. So okay. unless the chariot's made of a Minotaur, I think they're pulling it. Okay. <laughs> Although I do actually want to see a guy on the back of a Minotaur now. <laughs> Just uh, right. running around going, eh, I'm a chariot. <laughs> you could make your guardian brutes that way, I guess. Some some master blaster. Um, okay, so he was reasonably aggressive on his, uh, he being Steven, has been reasonably aggressive on his left flank, our right. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's sort of looking what to do against these volley guns on mm -hmm. the left uh master volley gun player tom robinson um if you were <laughs> stuck in this situation what would you be doing i quite like the i quite like the volley gun placement when he was placing down originally i wasn't too sure because the nature of this map is there's quite a lot of bits of terrain we can hide in mm -hmm. so what the volley guns are really going to be doing is they're going to find a, they're going to find an area where they can get a bit of overwatch on and they're going to just do a bit of force projection of that area. So like you see on the left-hand side, that's what they're doing. There's two uh, tokens in the middle of nowhere, and that's where volumes want to be. Because if you want to stand on those tokens, you're going to be in the open, and then the volumes will pick you up because you're goblins and your nerve is crap and your defense is crap, and that's what volumes will go straight through a rabble horde in two rounds at yep. most, really. Um, uh, in so addition... That's what be. It's just my my personal favorite thing to do with volumes, if you're facing the amount of counter battery, which you are here because there's more pups, and there's, there's a little there's another goblin crap. Is I put my um, battle shrine near them because then early game you're getting plus two nerve on the, from the battle shrine. People don't tend to actually go after the battle shrine because he's too hard to kill, so they go after your volley guns. You've got the time then with your lightning bolt to do your own counter, counter battle to pick up their mop up launchers, so they're using it in his mop up cages later on. And he's not doing the picking things off in that game either. Mm -hmm. But you usually like to evolve efficiently early on. You can also use your RLS to go push up into the middle because the goblins are slow and shit. And then you can pressure the back lines by going after Marco Blanchers, picking them up and turning into his back line. So there's all these little things you can do, but he hasn't really positioned himself to do it properly because I feel like not having a battle shrine there just makes it even riskier. Because volley guns, like, if they start to die off, the, the threat goes down massively. As soon as you lose one, like, you've only got two volley guns, and that's eminent survivable for two to three turns with Barable now. Um, another one when it's wavered, and you're like, all oh, right, great, so I know I've only got one coming back at me. Um, so I think Bogmans, they are cheap, but if you invest in them early on with just little bits and bobs here and there, you get more effectiveness out of them overall, whereas the back around the right flank's not that important. If it was backing up the Bogmans, it forces Steve to put so much effort into go after these cheap little units. And at the end of the day, the battle shrine's effective the entire game long. It's then going to give those honor guard more of later game. Like, you know, you're getting maximum effectiveness out of the Roddy Army at every single stage, and I don't think it's really correctly placed. You know what I mean? Sure. Now, that being said, it looks like he took two damage from Ma Pups and his volley gun held. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Um, but, I mean, Ma Pups and Spikers have got a ridiculous number of shots for the war engine, and they don't have reload and hit on fours and all the other silly bollocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's. It's nonsense. I agree. Now, to pivot back to Britain's original question, I think another factor for how KG Stevens being on the left is that both Honor Guard hordes are on that side, right? Yeah, yeah. So, that's that's the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on Alex's right, he's got those two foot guard hordes who are tough, but he doesn't have a lot of output over there. 
So I think if Steven can force the issue on the right while slowing things down on the left, he can get into a pretty good position that way. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't really like, I like, I mean, Alex is right, it's solid in terms of nothing's getting around him. Uh, foot guard are pretty good in combat, but there's not quite enough like mutually supportive elements in there. Um, he, I mean, he can pull all the lightning and then the flame burst to bear on the, the troll horde. And, and then he might be able to get a waiver off. But it doesn't stop them from regenerating it back. It doesn't stop them from, you know, it doesn't actually kill them because they'll regen it. And, you know, mm-hmm. it, it delays things. I don't, doesn't think it really solves the problem. But I think putting your lightning bolt in early to try and get a waiver on um, Kuzlo to keep them pinned in, to keep that rebel hog pinned back, then second mm-hmm. turn to wrap them and finish them off with your lightning bolt is probably the best plan. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you're spreading your fire out a little bit. But I, mm-hmm. I don't think Goblins have really gone that hard on the right either. No, they really haven't. Um, they've done they've done the sort of goblin thing, which is they've gone the same amount, and you can judge whether that's hard or lukewarm um, across the entire board. Like they kind of just the entire board has about the same amount of points committed to it. Mm-hmm. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, um, now, interestingly, about your lightning bolting, um, Kuzlo idea, Kuzlo did get a hex off on the um, boomstick wizard. So I'm guessing Alex will still shoot with it, but... Yes, because there's nothing there to capitalize on the hex. He doesn't have any lightning bolt himself. Uh, does Kuzlo not have lightning bolt? No, it's Magwa that has lightning bolt, well, isn't he's it? He's got a licky plum. Yeah, like... Yeah. Oh, got the tongue. Never mind. I don't know goblins. Well, I gotta, I gotta give him respect for taking the two of the doubled up <laughs> named characters, mm-hmm. like Magwan Jews and yeah. Kuzlo and Madfall. Like, just yeah, just keep taking the wacky ones. They're, they're, I mean, to be fair, they are both pretty good. They're both really good. <laughs> Do you think he's just going? Well, if I can cause a few points of damage, because they're only what. Um, are they nine eleven? Aren't they on the uh, on the um, wizard heroes? Uh, yeah, 10, yeah, ten twelve. Oh, yeah, your so, wizards are going to you stand the bearers. Then your your stupid wizards, like your bazillion ones, for some reason, eleven thirteen as a wizard. They're not anymore. They used to be, but they're not anymore. I'm, I'm feeling. Not. I'm feeling a little bit. Yeah, they used to be eleven thirteen and like seventy points, and it was. was and, and they got speed nine horses for some reason because they're bazillions, therefore they get elf horses. Used to. They don't get any more. Well, I hated bazillions. It was so stupid. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I, 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 can't, I still kind of fancy Rodia because I, I know the Rodia list and Alex is quite good with them. Actually. I think it fits his place out quite well. I don't um, know. I know. Rodia, I know. Rodia, <laughs> Uh, Roddy got a cool little overlapping threat projection with the volley guns and the honor guard, where the honor guards are now free to move up, claim that board space, outrange all the goblin stuff, and if anything comes forward as a whole as goblins, then one of the units gets shot, the other units are charged, and it's the same result. It's just going to take a lot of pain. And then the honor guard kill what they want to kill anyway, and don't get picked up in return. So the honor guard get into favorable trades, which goblins don't want. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm not sure if Steven's just opted into this, but... Um... That entire, our left, his right, that corner. Um, I don't know if he's just counting on waiting four turns of Maw Pup launcher shooting um, mm-hmm. and then moving forward. But right now, if he moves forward at all into that range, it's it's a bad trade for him. Um, like yeah. you were just describing, a really bad trade. So like, part of me is thinking he just holds all that there, shoots outranges Alex, mm-hmm. and waits till turn four to start moving forward. <laughs> He just doesn't but care. He, he, yeah, he, definitely. He's not going to outrange him because nothing's stopping the arrow from moving up into that gap in them lines there between the, the wood and the hill, blocking line of sight, taking a mop up out of the game, essentially, for shooting it for counter battery. And then as the volumes move up and now they're in range, what does Steve do? Does he back everything up, get further away from your objectives to not get shot? Depends if he moves them up or not, doesn't it? it it'll be interesting to see... Not many people would do that. Not many people would just go, I'll move the body guns up, or will they just be safe and stay where they are? If he moves them up, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. to. Why wouldn't you move them up? 
because you're being it's one, of, it's one of the like, un, understated most powerful things that Volleygun does is that people there going it's a reload war machine he's got 24 inch range that guy hurt me and then it walks forward and like oh yeah the pardon the line actually i can't get out of range now what do i do because yep. people they don't think about you just going i'm not going to move four inches up but you can't charge because i've got on a guy protecting me um i've got, That's the... mm-hmm. I've got 15 lightning bolt here what are you gonna do no. uh like people have talked to me before about like great volley gun turn ones when like someone moved into a position and they were able to shoot a unit and i'm always like one of my favorite volley gun turn ones is just moving it's just this power play of like nope my range just creeped forward and you can see the fear in them that where they thought they were safe is now not yeah, it's, it's great it's great 36 shots is a lot of damage isn't it potential at mm-hmm. least yeah. it's yeah, potentially it's a lot of damage I mean, on a spiky kill rabble hard turn one with just them. I've done it with um, the start. What storm them called these days? Shock troops. Shock, shock troops. troops. Yeah, I did that. I took a uh, three volley guns and a uh, twelve lightning and just took them off in one turn. And like, all right, then you've yeah, lost all your best troops in one go. What are you gonna do? Uh, and then the panic because they weren't expecting that. <laughs> Like you can, all right, you could you got the vermin tide battery thing backing them up, have you? It doesn't matter if they're dead. Like you've wasted all the bombs. It's just cope with there, it. There they go. There they go. He's doing it. He's doing it. Da, 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 da. Does that and, then and, put them in range of the wing it as well? Is the wing it you reckon he's gonna go in and try and um because he's in the wood at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he could do, but then because the wing is probably more important than one volley gun because he's huge and more expensive, and for some reason he's 13, 15 nerf, we'll get into that I, later. I don't know. Um, yeah, the guy, one guy hard just stands in front of him and goes, all right, then you kill one volley gun, then we kill you, and then we're up on the trade. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah but it depends if, yeah, if these on the guard do turn, because at the moment they don't have the art. Because at the moment he could, he could throw one into the undamaged volley gun, so he's unhindered, and crazily, a wing it is what that's still going to be nine attacks, isn't it? On um, they don't have any crushing though, do they? So it would be nines and uh, nine attacks on fours and well, part of that as well is because the goblins haven't pressured him because of the volley guns. Is that uh, you can just put an arrow in front like this? The arrow just sits in front and goes, Oh, well, then you can't charge it, so charge a different one. Or it stands in front of the wing it and kits a, a giant cone of all you can't charge anything because nothing can actually threaten the arrow because they're hard as nails and goblins are goblins and then you <laughs> right up the, on the arrow layers, and then you, you've done the same thing again like roddy are really good at making that overlapping threat level um where you don't want to charge this one thing because then you're in range of the volley guns but then they're only gather also covering them like the, the, this is the thing that they do really well and it's really really good fun <laughs> mm-hmm. i love it roddy is so fun they are they are the better version of Kingdoms of Men, <laughs> um, and I play Kingdoms of Men because I am a stubborn idiot. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Kingdoms of Men still have the general, don't they? They still get the general. They get mm-hmm. the captain. The captain. He's not, he's not even a general. But he's just like a worse yeah. But he's battle. way better than a general. But he's a worse battle shine. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's a bad battle shine. Um, <laughs> He's a bad battle shrine. You can just hear the captain turning in his grave, can't you? I'm a bad what the hell? <laughs> but what that does what that does what the captain does give you is one the excuse to pose as the captain as much as possible throughout the game. Uh, one leg up. <laughs> What's your pose as the captain? Oh come on, come on. Captain. You don't oh, you problem. don't know the, the, the captain? No, no. It's a is whole that... advertising campaign with Captain Morgan where there's a you, you stand oh, in a very particular Captain Morgan. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So for some reason, I was thinking How I Met Your Mother, which is like the captain, which is just like a uh, salute or something, isn't it? And I, and I was going back to early um, early conservative government where they were all power posing. When they walk out, like their legs are spray like rock stars and they're in suits. And you're just like, what are you, what are you doing? None of you are interesting or cool. Stop it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the power posing. Thing. And this is a UK thing, maybe. Anyway, so yes. Captain. It must be. I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, oh, no, I guess, I guess, yeah, you guys wouldn't have had that. But we had it, we had it like a, a stage where the PR guys are like, guys, when you come out of a building and you post to talk to like reporters, if you put your feet like half a meter apart, so like the wider than your shoulders, you look like you're really powerful. You're like how rock stars do with guitars, like they're, they're like, not that powerful. I love the look on Brinton's face. The look on mm-hmm. Brinton's face is like. What that's, the fuck? That's, that's, <laughs> a that's a phase. That's a fashion phase that our politicians went through. Yeah. 
Yeah, Before unfortunately. Before became incompetent as normal, but... I think the extra hour that we've been given to just talk about crap before this game actually started has actually had a detrimental fact in it. On Very much so. Anyway, Very much so, so. Um, Alex is almost in the shooting phase, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, but he's... Alex needed to get a charger. <laughs> Alex has run out of batteries. He's actually a robot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what were you so going to say, will... Brenton? Something intelligent? No, probably not. But um, okay. so I am interested. He's still sort of fiddling with the Aralaz, um, trying to get this just right. Um, yeah, that's covering the uh, wounded Volygon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what for shooting aspects? Yeah, from at least one of the. Um... Mm-hmm. It's also <laughs> like he's using the woods because that gray blob is tall enough to block line of sight to keep mm-hmm. anything from that rabble horde or the blasters from flanking him. He's just out of 10 inches from the rabble. I actually really like that position for the Duke. The chariot could go in alone, I guess, but that's the only charge on it. So we just talked, the chariot set seven attacks coming in hot. Coming down the the hill. Yeah. Seven attacks on fours and twos. Woo. And then a uh, flank, flank attack from the winged. And then, oh, that's that six more attacks. Attack. It'd be hindered, mm-hmm. so on like sixes and fives. Yeah. Against yeah. the guy who has stay in stone, I'm resolving ready to life, and I'll sit there the entire day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he won't sit there the entire day, because he's going to pivot the honor guard slightly to so he can flank yeah. the chariot if it does come in, right? Also, he would win the fight in the end, so. Right. Because he's got a good dog, and whereas goblins have bad dogs, so they have wolves, and whereas Roddy have Aralus, and they're good boys. Yeah, the the picture of it in the rule book is essentially the goodest oh. boy. It's, it's the best. Yeah. It's, it's so, like a big Labrador retriever arrow. with wings. I love it. So it's much. adorable. It's like, I, I made a I made a winged Aralus model recently, and I, I you can't find a dog model, so I've gone from um, Sif the Dark Souls, um, the other Great Wolf. Mm-hmm. And, that's the only thing you can get that goes anywhere near it, but it still looks awesome. It's not quite good boy enough because it's a wolf, but... Right. And doesn't it just, like, have a sword in its mouth or not on the model? Great. It's not... Ma- okay. I haven't got a guy in the back at all. It doesn't need it. It's just the dog just growls orders at people and people just won't follow it. Because who's going to argue with a winged dog with a sword in its mouth that's about 50 feet long? I don't know. Okay, so he's now also moving up his... Or not. Either. Or not. Oh. Thinking about it. That should I'm, be one of the wizards with Peg. It's the Lightning Bolt 3 one. I'm less yeah. of a fan of that one getting in, because that one you don't want the king to just charge. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's late game chaff and early game annoyance in it. You want to keep it as long as possible. Or just late game sit on a token. Yeah. That's yeah, the real sorry, reason you um, give him a Pegasus. He doesn't really need chaff because it's goblins and none of this. So for any knees chaffing, you just need to just kill it because you're already and you're better than them because goblins and shit. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a late game objective holding. It's an early game harasser. Mm-hmm. Like this placement that he just undid, I really liked. What, goblin charts of speed eight or nine? Nine. Nine. I think. I'd consider putting it just in front of the volley gun to force the uh, wing it into cover. And if you charge the if you charge the wizard, you um, uh, because the wingets in the cover, and you keep your honor guard on the middle back, they just cover the winget from charging it, so the, the winget can't charge essentially. Because then you just pick it up quite easily with the honor guard, and you haven't lost a, a positional advantage. I still like this position right here. You can't actually charge the wizard with the winget because he can't fit in the front. He's within twenty four inches of the mop up. Launchers, which is what he's measuring, but he's uh, at. Uh, yeah, just maybe, just just about, just about. That's the cheat for that is just click on the more pop, isn't it? You just click on the yes, more pop. Yes, yes, that's what you do. And if you do that, the leader point of the wizard is pretty cleanly within twenty-four of the mop up. <laughs> yeah, no, you you are correct. It is definitely in. Not by a ton, but it's it's clearly in. Oh, it's clear. Yeah, yeah. I. I Probably worth pointing out at this point in time, this is the top of the table, isn't it? A call to arms. 
after five games, you know, these guys have actually done really well to get to this point. So um, it's probably appreciating how, you know, this has been a tough call to arms tournament, isn't it? It's been some interesting maps have been thrown at people. It's not been that kind of traditional kind of, um, you know, um, uh, what, what map packs have we normally used? Sure. Interesting is a word for them. Exactly. All right. Interesting is not even a strong enough word to explain the maps that people have had to go through. Um, so to get to this point, these guys have done well. They've must have, they've both been must have been good players. I don't know too much about Stephen. Do you guys know a lot about Stephen himself? No. no. They're real. He's taken an interesting army. He's taken an interesting army. So it's good to hmm. have somebody on the top table taking an army you wouldn't. I, I would not normally expect, you know, if you took a goblin army, I was half expecting to see nine war engines. <laughs> when you, you know, the couple of weeks. That's really genuinely amazing. interesting goblin army, I appreciate it. Right. Now, yeah. that being said, your point about top table, we don't, this isn't, well, because the points change all the time, it definitely isn't the same army, but this might not even be close to the armies he played the first five rounds. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm. But the fact that he's choosing to use this on the top table that means he's got some confidence in it, or he's just showing off. One of the two. <laughs> he's probably just showing off. <laughs> or bored really with the high. boarding goblin army. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. Hmm. But it's one of the attractions of Call to Arms, isn't it? You don't just take a boring army, you take something that's mm -hmm. a bit of fun. So we've got the Seductress has basically just... Stealthy Seductress has just flown out into the middle basically, and is ready to go cause havoc. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, she's she, in this kind of like, um, back when I started in, uh, third edition just came out, my favorite list was three flying individuals. It was a champion, a seductress, and a, usually a second champion, but sometimes my Um And I, I can't remember who I was playing, but I played someone with my uh, Northern Lions list, and they had a, the full goblin gun line. I was like, oh, I wish I played some of my Abyssal list. And he went, oh, have you a rematch then? And then he, he was like, I, t I told him, I was like, oh, I really like my, my wrist list will do good jump against it because it's got all the elements I need. And I played him against it's like, mm -hmm. three fine individuals. Like, yeah, watch. As they proceeded to just ping pong around the back of his life, just mm -hmm. picking things up here, mm -hmm. there, and everywhere. Yeah. The, like, the rest of the Abyssal stuff, like the big stuff these days, isn't actually that good value for money, but the individuals that Abyssals have are just awesome. Like, mm, champion, Abyssals have good stuff, but Abyssals yeah. They Lutris is a super good value. Mm -hmm. uh, Mount is great. And I think Bazooza is overpriced, really, these days, compared to like, normal champions. Like, on his own, sure, but... I don't know. I'd still, if you're running multiple of those combat individuals, I'd still probably take him as one of them. But I think you, at that end point, you're getting another combat individual out of not taking him. Like, a Seductress and a champion is only a little bit more expensive. So your argument is that getting those two is way better. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. having two is better than you having have, the one Bazuzu. I can see Bazuzu. that. One of them or you can have three of them, and you, re you reach that tipping point where people can hide individuals behind units between two units. But when you've got three of them and two of them got duelists, they're fucking terrifying because you, you can't hide. Turn two or three, one of them's got scout. I'm going to get into your back lines. I'm going to pick your shit up and... You know. Here we go. So some shooting. So shooting is the bit that we're all going for. Yep. Mounted scouts doing shooting. Do wing it. Oh man! If if Alex does kill the wing it by the end of the game, Alex technically wins. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> this is yeah. It's a it's a secondary win condition. Is if you eliminate yes, you all your wing opponents' wing it. Kill the wing it. You technically have the moral victory because wing it's a. Why are they thirteen fifteen? Because somebody tell me. I don't know. Um, two oh, goblins Rob in a crate. Rob Berman, I win. Two goblins in a crate, thirteen and fifteen. Uh, my my argument is that you have to be so crazy or brave to get in one of those that uh, you have high nerve. Like they should be fearless because to get in a goblin flying machine, you have to be sure. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite. Or just stupid. Game. That is my maybe favorite. They, maybe. Game. Maybe they should be like a 10 13 because they're stupid like trolls. Yeah, okay, no, I so we got, yeah. we got shooting going on. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Is he about to shoot with this 
lightning bolt Pegasus. Yep. He just then got to... hexed and he moved with. Oh, well, he's maybe not. He's maybe backing off because he did three damage with the. Um, uh, cool. the he's time. not allowed to shoot with it. Is I think they just where I was going out. with that. I but yeah, it's just like they, fig they figured they it. Moved. Yep. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the new thing with Hex. Hex is really good now. Mm -hmm. right. It's legit. I don't I know cool. what those dice were. That was the uh, lightning bolt. Yeah, now he's, um, flame bearers. Flame bear. I like flame bearers. Where's this going? I think he can only Troll. shoot it. Troll. Okay, the horde. Sure. Uh, I mean, he could go for the bruiser, but I think the horde... He could go for the hero, but it looks like he's going for the horde. Hmm. Either way, it's a great target for Steed, isn't it? More than it is for Alex, because they're just... Yep. I think the bruiser's the better you target. Defense, uh, defense 5, regen 5 is okay, but the region shouldn't recover all of it. Not all of it, no. Right. And he and can hide better with the bruiser, though. That's the thing, is he can maneuver the bruiser a bit better, um, whereas the horde doesn't. So if you stick damage on the horde, all right, it doesn't get you necessarily a kill straight away, but it Ooh. does. Four? Four damage? Four damage is good. Damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's also his source of inspiring on that side of the board. That's a yeah. good point. The troll. Oh, no, it's the inspiring talisman one as well, isn't yep. it? Is it? Yep, that's the one with the talisman. And he's only 12, 15 nerve and has no waiver mitigation. Mm -hmm. So. He's got but a six and a seven. He's not. I feel like. Why nope, nothing with any of these nerve rolls. Yeah, no. I, I don't know why. Why is he put three damage on the the luggage gang and then split the fire to put four damage on the trolls? Like you do the things that you know can't affect. There's, I see the argument, but also the only thing he could focus on was trolls. So it kind of made sense to put the extra shots on the luggets. Why not focus on the trolls with it too? Why not focus on the inspiring troll? Because it has regen. Yeah, but. <laughs> But shot it anyways. Right, right. I get what you're saying. I'm just trying to. That's my guess as to what Alex is thinking yeah. is that he doesn't want to put all of his firing into the inspiring troll. Yeah, I, know you I mean, mean you... I've, I've always found it's, it's, it's. I think 90% of the time it's always better to concentrate as much as you can on one target, especially if it's an inspiring source. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think. I think it's. I think he did that. He forgot about hex. He pointed hex out, so he didn't do it. And suddenly these plans were out of whack. And I think that's. That's. I believe that. I was like, like turn one is always the kind of way you're kind of setting up your army, aren't you, to get an idea of what, how the battle plan is going to work. So this is going to be really interesting. Turn two, how Steve kind of pushes it forward. I want to know how he's how committing committed he is to this. Because the wing it, if the wing it charges in, he's committed to take even the wing it. Basically, um, he's got no threat against the the cannons, etc. He could charge in, and there's nothing that can really deal with him, especially if he takes the right hand side one. Well, that's the only. Oh no, I guess he could charge any of them, couldn't he? Because he's in the front of all of them. Yeah, I think if he takes any of them, there's nothing that could really deal with him. But also. Is that really what the wing it wants to be doing? It frees up that side. It may not be the best use of his points, but it frees up his side. I mean, um, if the wing it's alive at the end of the game and uh, can just jump on our objective, the wing it's on his job. Mm. Fair. So we have um, Ku Kuzlo and Madfall doing spicy moves, being a, a fake a fake flyer. <laughs> yes. So they oh, are. Look at that. Look at that. Um, Kuzlo and Madfall are... Oh, no, it's Magua that's an individual. Never mind. Oh, these characters are confusing. Yeah, they are, 100%. I, I'm totally with you. It's like it's like Wild Charge. You forget what they do. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Now, I feel like Alex could just block it so Kuzlo can't flank the foot guard and can't maneuver around without giving a flank to the trolls on anything. I think I feel like he'll be able to do that. Um, this area below him is impassable. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, below 
Yes. Yes. That's possible. That's Warhammer. Come on. Come on. Get with it. All right. Mm -hmm. Blocking terrain. Sorry, I didn't call them storm vermin at least. <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> Tom's Tom, that's, that's, Tom's that's, like, what are what are storm vermin yeah, called yeah. these days? Like it hasn't Rock been six it, years. It's definitely a rip off of fucking Skaven. Let's be honest. <laughs> Oh, fucking fucking right? oh, terrain and impassable terrain, you know, there's they're, a different rule set. I think Brinton, I'm fairly sure. I'm oh, here we go. Here we go. He's, going for, he's going for the um, the organ gun. <laughs> I, I, look, my last opponent, I, did, I don't know why I was doing it, but I think the thing that irks me a little bit is wounds and damage, right? Because mm -hmm. we take damage in Kings of War, but wounds come from another game. And... Yes. I, I don't know, I do it all at the same time. It's like, you know, it's calling a uh, a pharaoh a tomb king, you know? It's one of those things that you just do because you're used to doing it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just that. I think it's like the talk around the game. We've got local guys who never play Warhammer who talk about wounds and impassable terrain just yeah. because the re that's how the rest of us talk about that, and that's yeah. what they picked up. I, I try and hold the line at calling the units the right thing because that, for me, is like, IP and branding and like mm -hmm. the lore, but I will freely and accidentally call it wounds instead of damage and impassable instead of blocking, <laughs> but that's okay. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't even try to get either name right. It's like, you know, pike guys and foot knights and stuff like that. that that's what they are. See, that one, that one drives me nuts because... That's the excuse you're going with, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was playing someone who was like, oh, it's my my flag guy, and like it turned out it was a, a thane for Northern Alliance. Who no, no, that's not a flag confide. guy. The flag guy for Northern Alliance is the Scald. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just but, like, but like call him the right. Of, it's your hero. But the thane yeah. had rallying. Both probably be bad. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But the thane had rallying, so right. he thought of him as a flag guy. And well, he, he has him a flag an up guy. The and. upgrade is some elf guy's standard is probably why he was calling him the flag guy. Yeah. To, I mean, to be fair, to be fair to this guy, it's technically more accurate than because it's not a standard bear because they don't carry standard. They play music. They scowl, don't they? Scowls are just scowls are just like angry bards. Mm -hmm. But he's got turn out standard, which is a flag. Therefore, he is the flag guy. He's the accurate. flag guy. I know. It's, it's just far so more annoying. confusing to you. It's so annoying. Okay. <laughs> So back to this game. We got the goblin player is not being boring. And no, no. <laughs> this is great. Um. So we have, like, what it looks like to me is he's trying to set up the things that can hurt stuff to eventually hurt stuff. But right now he's just sending in the every clown he's got. Um, so oh the, the, the winget's gone straight in. It looks like he's trying to find a way to unlock his... Uh, blasters to be able to charge or threaten charges against mm -hmm. honor guard or other useful things. Um, yeah, I think he almost had it with the thing he completely undid. <laughs> um, if he puts that blaster in the woods out of arc of the duke, so basically nothing can charge it because then he can block with the rabble to keep the honor guard out. Then that blaster is like poking out of the woods threatening... Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, Individual hey, so. charges. Oh. Hindered going for it. Hindered going for it. It's a tough one, isn't it? That's um that's Magwar, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So he's a he's, he's a mini vampire. So it shouldn't break it, but I think he's kind of like I d I don't mind the Arlos there. I think the Arlos is about two inch too far forward because he's out of range of the uh volley gun that's being charged for inspiring. Oh yeah, good point. Is it, 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 there's no inspiring well, I mean, back as well. I mean, who's covering the scouts? The scouts need covering. Mm -hmm. I see the concern with this Magua charge. He might just be throwing away Magua if the dice don't cooperate, and that's not something you want to be doing. Is yep. it no, because if, if, if they end up with the honor guard charging Magua, does that give them an overrun into the um, into the into the rabble? You did. <laughs> I think it would have, but he undid everything, so now I can't tell. He's he's <laughs> thinking. We'll never know. But I'm I'm liking I'm liking the idea of pinning the honor guard in and setting up basically blasters to mm -hmm. to just 
go in and do what blasters do, which is cheaply trade. I'm loving the aggressiveness. This is really good. You know, I mean, he's still doing it. He's still trying to find that perfect Did, position to put him in. This is some proper is that, governorship. Is that where Magua started the turn, where it is right now? Or yeah, yeah, before he it, moved yeah. there? Magua wasn't even, in, wasn't even in range to charge the mounted scouts. He's got D3 wild charge, hasn't he, as well? Oh, he's got D3 wild charge. That I didn't see that. Okay, so maybe he rolled high enough, too. Don't, yeah, don't I, mean, worry. I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I just saw it now. <laughs> I just didn't realize it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Magua has like eight special rolls, so it's fine. Um, it's, it's literally like crushing strength, duelist, individual, inspiring, mighty, vicious, wild charge, and a lightning bolt. Because why not? Yeah. Um, and it's a good then, hero. It's a good hero. You know, individual comes with its own set of like five rules that that dictate mm -hmm. how it works. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the, that's the trouble you run into sometimes with these units, like scouts or um, other sort of chaffy units. Is mm -hmm. you sort of put them in your battle line and you forget that you are potentially. Um, we'll see if a charge goes through, putting like a weak point in your battle line that someone can charge into for that extra movement and, and reform and, and sort of pinpoint. So you have to be careful and, and yeah. support. It's um, going to get lucky those... with these mounted scouts though. I mean, what are they? Like 10, 12, aren't they? You know, they mm -hmm. are, um, it's not an easy kill for those guys. Hindu. Oh no, um, no. He's charging with the chariot. So yeah. He's the charging problem with everything with this... he can. No, so yeah. the problem with charging the chariot is if the duke backs up, like all of a sudden he has arc to that blaster in the woods. Yeah. Or uh, I don't happen, think he has the flank on the rabble. He, but he he's close. Definitely has that. He might even just still have a charge on those luggets. I'm not confident about that one, but he mm, might. Yeah, that's too steep an angle, I reckon. Um, but yes, you've Probably. got the, the blasters covered. So I was thinking, if Magua doesn't pick up, you go in the honor guard. Seductress can either go for the rabble. Um, technically, the blaster's in the woods, so the, the seductress can go for the blaster and pin it. Mm -hmm. But in either case, you've done the same job. Um, I don't know if the goblin king on chariot is the same height to block the blaster. I No way. It's probably three, and the monster's going to be five. Well, the, the, it's a chariot. Is a chariot? I think chariots are height one less now, aren't they, compared to what they used to be? They're norm. They're, it's three, and the um, yeah, the duke is five. They're they're cavalry height. So you've got enough stuff there where you can pin things in in the, in the correct place that the royal you want them to be in. Yeah. Um, for a favorable trade with getting Magua out of the way. I mean, it feels like with the duke. The wizard, if you needed it, but you don't want to use it for that. Um, the seductress, like, he's got a couple plugs that he can stick onto units and stop them, while the mm -hmm. honor guard just picks up Magua for free if this doesn't work out. Yeah, he could potentially throw the seductress at the rabble horde, blow up Magua, throw the duke on the blaster... And then just double volley gun and also lightning bolt the king and hope that does it. Otherwise, his honor guard are getting flanked. But even then, it'd probably be hindered. Um, the honor guard is safe as they are, really. I would, not if, if they charge the... If they, or, if they overrun into the rabble to team up with the seductress. Um, which they would because they're shuffled down on Magua. Mm -hmm. They would definitely... It take like one. four or five inches. They're either they... safe from the blaster, or they kill the rabble because the just helps out. The mm -hmm. blaster goes into the honor guard, doesn't kill them because they're on the guard. So let's be honest. Um, then I resolve and radiance. They go back into the rear lines over on the right side from there, and the honor guard can wreak some absolute havoc if they're not stopped. Because you don't want will as well. So like, if you're not killing them, who cares about waiver because they're on the guard. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's. I like the play. I like, it's, it's a fucking dangerous play, but I do like it. Yeah. It feels it feels more goblin-y than most goblin really are these days. So I, I enjoy. It. I appreciate. Right. What it's doing. This is what goblin. This is how goblins are supposed to work. Yes. I don't know, I don't know about supposed to, but yes, this is a good to. way. Of, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> 
This is a good way to use them. It is a good way to use them. Yeah. I, really, I am completely partisan. Like, I am, I'm completely on Roddy's side because I'm a Roddy man through and through. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. I appreciate oh, when oh, goblin oh, players oh, oh. Play, like, catch more goblins, and that's great. So. I was going. I was going to say the. Um, have we acknowledged the guys in the chat yet? Because they've they've hung on longer than most, right? You know, we've started an hour late. So I thought it'd be I worth it. Oh, Justin Justin Burke has asked, "What do the clocks look like?" Um, a mess. What clocks? Is the word I'm going to use. <laughs> are there clocks? Do they ever do clocks? There are. There's a clock. Is it, okay. is it, is it, is it that, that a week over on the deadline? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, so, I'd, I'd like to, I think they really should have played on the clock. I think personally, I think they should have played on the clock because they are on the clock. Are they? Yeah. They just didn't oh. use it for deployment. Right. They didn't deploy on the clock because they would have run yeah. out of time in deployment. It's usually, it's usually it's just on the screen is all. I didn't. I, I thought there was on the clock. I thought. I, I don't know how to do that magic. Like I have the clock up in one of my other screens. I don't know how yeah. to make. I well, I, I'm not going to bore you... people who are actually watching this by saying how I figured it out, but there is a way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, sure I know you can is. do it because Mike does it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we we could leave that down to Mike Adkins' magic, couldn't we? We just say he does it through sheer will. It through through being the hobby hero that he is, Mike Adkins achieves it. Yeah. If he doesn't win that first one. We're marching on Mantic, right? That's agreed. I, I don't know. It's across the sea, right? If you do march on that, unless you're Trident Realm, you're not going to make it. <laughs> We're going to. So um, there is yeah. this thing in America you may have heard of called boats. <laughs> boats and, are only in America, though. And also, also airplanes. It's yeah. weird how it's weird how the Americans invented boats, despite the fact that America didn't really exist until like, <laughs> we the boats. To make it exist by I'm not... so so just imagine me right now as tom hardy pointing at you and saying that that's bait <laughs> <laughs> like, i know oh, where that one is it was one of our favorite times when, when we were allowed to go out to pubs and stuff where we'd, we'd go on a pub night crawl and we'd, we'd rock around with empty pank glasses going and making the the, the, the bane accent but I have to, when i finish this i might try it so my, I thought you were going to go a different direction, which is the Nick I, Williams American visitor favorite of, hey, this pub we're in is older than your country. This other <laughs> pub we're in is older than your yeah, country. Yeah, that was great. That. Yeah, yeah. Nottingham, Nottingham was my, uh, I went to uni in Nottingham. They got the old ship and the old salutation uh, with the old thorn spelling, which is the uh, Y, which is pronounced as D, but it's got the Y. Did you yeah. not just turn around and go, this gate on this river over here is older than your country, right? Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's basically anything at that point and then mm -hmm. i live in california which is the even like for us it's like oh that house is so old it's from the you know 60s <laughs> <laughs> like, yep so. so most people in england live in minus houses which are therefore old than most of your country anyway mm -hmm. i i used to live in one of the older old old buildings in minneapolis a full like 100 years old mm -hmm. These damn a hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I got a granny who's older than that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so he's shooting. Um, Stephen, the goblin player, is shooting. Is uh, missing with more pups. <laughs> yep, yep, more pups miss. Everybody's happy about that because more pups are pricks. <laughs> mm -hmm. And. The, the beauty of it is, well, uh, it's one of those roles where you go, am I rolling D3s? No, I no, I might be rolling no, D6s. No, he was rolling yeah. D6s. But we all do it, don't we? You literally just go, you sure you're on that? Yeah, I'm rolling D6s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you hopefully double check. Like, maybe I will. Oh, no. No, it's that bad. No. I, <laughs> Still that bad. <laughs> it's, in, it's in range, apparently, with a blaster. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Looks like. Yeah. This is the thing. The blaster shooting is far too good. I don't like it. Did he only roll one? He roll one dice. That doesn't make any sense. That's not how it works. What? <laughs> what? What? What happened here? Was Wait, was he on a six? He might have been on a six. 
Marauder combat. 7, I mean. That was combat. He's gone to combat and he's rolled yep. a... Yep, yep. And he's rolled an 8, so that will wave them. Wave them, yeah. Uh, I thought we had to be like, the case are alive. Um, it's not just that, but the honor guard can charge and overrun into the rabble. Potentially. He needs like 5 inches. Yeah. I think the other guy can just charge the rabble if they're that bothered. Um, if you don't want to chance it, it's... I'd chance it, I think, because getting rid of Magwar and Jews early on with a, a, a decent opening of like a, a three. I mean, Magwar's just it. more expensive than a rabble horde, right? <laughs> yeah, no. And, and Magwar does operate as an individual, and that is a dangerous spot to leave an individual. Mm -hmm. You can't no. leave Magwar there. I do think the play from there is to hit Magua and then have something gum up the horde. You've so got what was the what was the ninety six attack? No, that's the wing it. The wing it uh, whiffed on the volley gun. That volley gun is not disordered. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite thing when people uh, that disorder volley gun. Like, I, oh, right. I, I have no idea how the rules for that work and I don't know if it can shoot anything or not, but it's not disordered. It can yeah. withdraw. Um, and, that and, then give, the and then be given a halt order, and it can still shoot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there are ways to do it. It's kind of it's kind of a fig. It's kind of a bit weird, but you can do it. That is ridiculous. Oh. Yeah, man. Oh, I love it when people do it. It's like, oh no, my three attack character will definitely wave with the volley guns. It's like, doesn't do anything. Doesn't even hit. Mm -hmm. Get off me board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we're checking who the one inch backup. Looks like it just barely gives him the blaster, but it doesn't give him the horde. And he just checked his pivot does not take him to the luggage troop. Mm. So, his only, yeah. so his only charge options are the king or that blaster. Which should be good enough. I don't know if the problem is you don't want the arrow to go into the blaster and be flanked by the other blaster on a, a good kill from the honor guard. I don't think it is. Afraid. Like, I don't think it would be in the flank, but it... Oh, wait, no, the blaster backed up. He can't see it. The woods are in the way. Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's back. I back totally up, missed yeah. that he backed up. I thought he was still in the woods. Okay. It's um, top table plays. That's what it is, top table plays. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. It makes that blaster a lot less of a threat able to come in there. Mm-hmm. So he could just throw the Seductress at the Rabble Horde, beat up Magua with Honor Guard, and then just keep slapping around the chariot with the Baron. I mean, I think that Blaster's job is not to go through those woods to that flank. I think that Blaster's job is going to be to try and put wounds on this Honor Guard in the middle. You're right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if the Honor Guard go in on the Rabble. Mm -hmm. I think it's hindered, but the Blaster has a flank on him then. Yeah, um, it, the blaster won't because you put the just in the middle of, which means that on the overrun, the honor guard are coming out from. I'm just trying to work it out from my side. Yeah, so if the seductress goes into the rabble and he yeah. gets the overrun, oh, the honor yep. guard is in, way down in here. In that case, that's yeah. true. I'm thinking if the honor guard set, just do a charge or yep. overrun in alone. And and by staggering, up. The, the, the middle blaster at the rear, when that goes in, it does 6 7 damage, it dies, you round his of it back, you've got Radiance of Life, you take another one back, you then pick up the next blaster, um, and then Radius hits you another one back, and then you, because you're essentially dash 18 for most of the game with Andromeda Will. Um, you, does you, he you, then just you, use you, the. You picked up three the trading non, which is what Roddy enjoys. So. If he does, he use the war trombones then to kind of move over to the middle. And if he puts the knights there in the middle, it it does allow the war trombones to maybe have an impact and cause some damage. And you can still shoot with the more pop launchers with the two um, blasters. That's a lot of damage that could possibly happen. Yeah, but he needs like that is uh, two foot guard. <laughs> Hordes with rally yes. um, and lightning bolt. What is that? Uh, Twelve. Yeah, you're Plus currently looking. Bearers. You're currently looking at fifty nerves, which is fearless. I mean, the foot guard. 
They outfight everything that Goblins put against them. Yeah, they do. So, mm -hmm. like, he's invested a little bit in ever all three sort of sections of the battlefield. Yeah. Um, and right now, like, he needs like if he lessens his investment in that flank, I don't think he has a chance at winning it, unless he he does something incredibly tricky with uh, Kuzo and Madfall. Um, but right now, without in a straight up fight. He needs every resource there to even have a chance at that fight. Um, and it? shifting resources to the middle is going to be tough. He did, he did have a pretty tough last turn, though, didn't he? I mean, you look at the, the two more the two more pop launchers missing. You look at the Magra. I mean, you've got the Waver. I mean, I suppose that's probably about right. But they're missing with the Winget as well. The Winget just flubbing all his attacks is actually quite harsh. When you think it's nine attacks hitting on fives and winning them, or sorry, damaging on fours. Uh, he's just asking a quick question. Does the weird draw disengage count as a move for reload? And the answer is no. Okay. Which is what we talked about. Yeah. And he asked that in the chat? or He yeah. asked that in the chat. Elliot already ruled no. Okay. And he's what the, asking... What does Elliot do? He is mostly, mostly accurate. He's accurate in this case. Accurate enough. And, yeah. I like that Elliot is still left over in that chat from when he was thinking of being a commentator and is now answering rules yeah. questions for us. I appreciate it. I, I, my, my book's down there. My book is literally like 40 centimeters away, and that's too far. All right. <laughs> Not too far. I need to fix that it's super dark in here, so I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. I, 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 Brinton, I think you would probably want to look at chat because uh, you've got a little compliment there from Matt. Oh, that's sweet. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, Come on, so host. I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping. I'm hoping that you aren't lying and that he just called me out for something totally stupid. <laughs> no, no. His, his his comment is, "Oh my goodness, so good to see Brinton on screen again." Oh. And uh, he had uh, happy face with love hearts in the eyes. Oh, which the is hard eyes. disturbing, and um, but also quite, you know, that boosts your uh, your confidence a little bit. I'm assuming. Yeah, I think he's just trying to be nice. Um, since I don't have the the sultry voice of a Michael Piercy or the the cuddly hugs of a Jeremy Duvall, that he has to you try something. That, Matt. You think you're insincere? That's what I think. That's how much he cares about your love right now. <laughs> Oh well. So what's going on in this game? <laughs> less, less, less about me and human hard eyes emojis, and more about what I mean, Kings of War is going down. What's going on is great. Suctress is doing war machine hunting. Looks okay. Like it. So it's the seductress. It's not bad at it. It's just not what I thought it was going to do. Yeah, it's it's still it's still a really good thing for late game keeping the volleyguns in the in play because there's so little things that can close down and and then and then the volleyguns half on the mop ups. Uh, especially since the, the wing is about to take a full load of volleygun to the face, but because right, it's thirteen fifteen, for some unknown reason, it will survive. <laughs> right, but unlike the wing, it uh, the seductors actually will probably kill the war machines. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, can well, put, you can put the second volley gun into the other wing it into the wing it as well. He does have two ooh, he's I don't think he has it, but he's eyeing up that he has um, honor guard in the flank of that king. The problem mm -hmm. is he hits the Duke first, so he has to figure out how to get the Duke out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Duke doesn't have another charge. Yeah, you want to keep the Duke fighting at this point? Is it such a bad thing to go after the Rabble Horde? Um, if he goes after the Rabble Horde, what do... Well, two of his volley guns are shooting the wing at, but what does the third one shoot? What Rabble Horde are you talking about from the Honor Guard? Far left, hitting it with the Honor Guard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... Does it does it give the honor, does it give um, the bruiser a, a rear charge onto the honor guard from there or a flank charge? Oh, probably. Yes, I, I kind of I kind of expect honor guard and the flank of a king on chariot. 
to kill it. To kill it. Yeah. And then I don't I, think he would be pivoting into the woods. No, no, definitely not. But the, the left side volley gun does have an arc on that rabble horde. It will be covered, however, it if it does two damage before the owner got over and into it, then that's as, pretty much as much as the, the seductress would have done. So, eh. Sure. They also, obviously not if the honor guard are in the way, but they also have distance to the mop up launcher on the hill. And I guess he still might if the mop up is on the hill. So we just talked, that all. We talked in another battle about this, about when you go in for some of these spicy charges, you got to think about what happens when you win. Um, so one, Ooh. he's he's doing a fun little let's block <sighs> off. Let's try and block off the views. <laughs> Tom doesn't like that, but yeah, yeah. No, I can no, see no, no, have, have a bit of faith. Like, who gives, who gives a fuck about lucky troop? You're a you're on a guard. <laughs> you kill these so, things for fun. Right. Sort yourself out. Have some fun. Grow some balls, bro. Grow some balls. A little bit of perspective, like this is what you do. So my question is, he kills. It, we'll talk about if he doesn't kill them. But that's way less likely. He blows up this king. Like, what's his reform? What's uh, when I eat, pretty much. Okay. Uh, you say, the the ones are covering you. You're, you're safe. Um, the rubble hard can't see you either. So turn around, and cause some problem. Like you're forcing the troll bruiser to commit. But look, uh, it, it gets to charge the pixies for nothing. I don't really care about that because there's nothing to really stop. Blaster like, flank charge. Blaster Not if he gets the kill. He does get because he, he can't reform a nut unless he gets re. He can he can definitely reform to put both the blaster and the king in his front or not the king the troll in his front. Click it. Click on the um horde. Yeah, I suppose he could do. It's probably not going to be as close as we're looking at it, but he'll get a decent amount of a uh, pivot, I guess. But um. I don't know how he gets the the blaster in the front, but maybe I'm just not. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be close. It is going to be very close. It's going to be <sighs> one way or the other. Yeah. If he doesn't, yeah. and a blaster in the flank is pretty vicious as well, isn't it? It's you know we're talking about six attacks, blast e three is a blast e six. Oh. Yeah, that's bad. That's really bad if that blaster gets in the flank. Two of them uh, should hit, so it's yeah, it's two d six hits. Are um, the rabble going to be an arc if he does that as well? The rabble are going to be arc if he moves to that direction. So it would be a blast that animate rabble in the front. Oh. Yeah, the rabble in the front doesn't really. It's it's a rabble hard. <laughs> hey, yeah, but you, damage. You know, you say that, but a a, a blaster in the flank, seven hits. Right, six, six wounds on average. <laughs> um. And if you do seven, eight damage, sorry, I'll try not to use wounds. And then the <laughs> goblins add on two more to it. Now we're suddenly starting to get into mm -hmm. to sketchier roll range. Like right. If the blaster flanks. hits in the flank, that's scary. But like even blaster, troll, and rabble horde all in the front, they could t they could oh. probably take that. Okay, we're mm -hmm. shooting again. This yeah. Is, uh, yeah, this round... is lightning bolts going at the um, Logit Gang regiment at the moment. So mm -hmm. five damage on them in total from the total of three before puts them an eight. That's gonna that's gonna hurt. That's um, yep. they don't like that. Yeah, if he can pick off these units on the right before they close, that's the Bruiser didn't take any damage though. The Bruiser actually survived the fire bolts. So he's done all right. It's going over to the left now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, it looks like, is ign might be ignoring the winget and just blasting the rabble with everything. Uh, he's checking if he can see him. Um... I mean, it's not a bad shout. I, I was thinking about just putting all three in and taking the cover on the third one, but I, the winger is pretty much going to be as effective for pillage as the harder rabble is going to be. Mm -hmm. And the harder rabble isn't currently a threat. Uh, they don't like getting shot by volley guns. You can, put, you can put one volley gun in now, see what happens. If you roll really well, throw the second one in. Go for the waiver, and then the third one goes on the winger. But like, 
uh, like, see what happens. Like, take the shots that you know you have to take. So yeah, that's what he's doing, at least to start off. And and damage yeah, goes like off. Seven hits and fives is great. Five damage. The, the first one did five. Yeah. Oh, this is when it gets greedy and, and thinks the others will do that, and the next one does none. <laughs> it did three. So what's he going to do with the last Brinton, one? Just slow down, Brinton. Above average overall, I mean, it's about average. But one up, one up, one up. Sorry, coming. Oh. <laughs> Ghost, take oh. The shot. I think you just take the shot of the wing it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I would too, but we'll see what Alex does. Eight damage we... so far. Mm -hmm. Right, so there we go. Because one more volley gun shooting at the rabble isn't going to kill the rabble. Oh, look at this. What? Oh, that's oh he bad. scores a bit of point of damage, but that's going to be a hard waiver, isn't it? Yes, oh. because for some reason they're 13, 15. <laughs> what, what is that again? Do we go over that already? This we discussed this. We we, we have uh, discussed who, who to Vincent blame. Made a very, very, very tenuous case for why somehow these goblins are thirty. They are they are the elites of the goblin army. They are the Goofwafa. Um, <laughs> okay, what's a fourteen to a luggage regiment? <laughs> fourteen. I think they're a dash fifteen. I think they're fifteen. They're dash fifteen. Regiments are 12, 14. Look at the <laughs> goblins. So he didn't get them. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if he doesn't get this king, then he's in. Then that's bad. He, he will. Uh, mm. Goblin kings. Fuck. He only did 24 damage to it. Don't be so confident. <laughs> okay. So the so honor guard picks up the king. Is that first blood? Is that first blood? I think so. Yeah. Should have thought about what this would be and not be trying to do this weirdness. Yeah, I'd have done. I'd have tried it before I moved it in. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, I think you can do it. Like, oh, I'm expecting to kill you, but B because then you know where it's going to be when you've done the job. Yeah. This is. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, he's got it. Top table. Come on, top table. <laughs> Easy. Okay. He's got yeah. the blaster and troll in the front, and the rabble horde doesn't even have arc. Okay. So that's the move. Succubus rolls kind of bad, but still yeah. does that's three. Good. That's good enough. Did he kill it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's only like uh, 9 yeah. 11, isn't it? It makes up, for the, makes up for the crap roll. Well, well he only it's... got 11. So, so that's the succubus flew into the top of the screen and picked up a mop pop launcher, and now we're gonna see um, the honor guard try and flank uh, Magua. Magua and someone in the chat said, "Oh, it's oh! oh! so did a bunch of damage and then double one did on the the second try." Um, because one of Magua's 15 special rules is inspiring. Yep, so. pretty much. Um, now... Yep. Sad face for... So, Alex. what are... Wobble, wobble. How does Steven <laughs> take advantage of that? Obviously, that gives the rabble and blaster charges on the honor guard. Blaster will be hindered in the flank. He's got another blaster that could potentially fit or get in, but I don't know how it fits. I'd, I'd take the blaster and the rabble and then take Magua into the scouts because at the moment there's no threat to the scout. If he if he kills the scout, mm -hmm. he's in a perfect position because he's going to be hitting on threes, damaging on twos, wouldn't he? Is that right? Um, Something like that. Magua's yeah, got... got threes and twos, and they've got four damage on them. Are they got four damage or just two? He's getting the bigger mm. boat. <laughs> oh, this is this is throwing it all up. I think, interestingly, I think he could set it up so that the um, the honor guard are going to be hit in the flank by the um, um, by the blaster. Yep. Or, and then have the rabble either turn so that they can face both the warm engine or. All the honor guard, and then just have the troll hold them down because that's all they need to do. Mm -hmm. He can also just get a. Uh, no, I don't think he can fit on the front of the honor guard with the blaster. 
because the Pegasus is blocking. Correct. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. a double <laughs> charge onto the wizard with um with the blaster and the luggage. Do you the sacrifice blaster. the blaster for that? Oh, it dies, doesn't it? Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah you might be better off holding it off. Yeah, you got a good point. Yeah, we got a good point. Um, now, interestingly, I don't know if he's going to take it, but he did check, so he must know it's there. His rabble have a flank on the duke. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they fit if the wing it goes an inch forward. But they're hindered. Uh, and Are they that hindered? That there. Well, they will because the... I mean, when the wing it comes for an inch forward, that means they're going to be just touching the wood. Yeah, he probably will be touching the woods. Which means you take that fifty attacks and sixes, wouldn't you? Like you'll, you'll ground him, you'll ground him, but who cares? Because he's got Iron Resolve, Stain Stone, mm -hmm. and Radiance, so he'll you'll get shot again, and then he'll fuck it off and charge something else. So you haven't actually done anything. He's still got three damage on him, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, I think that's. Damage. I think that's the best thing the rabble have to do. Can Magron Jews hit them? Hit him, they could do, couldn't they? Uh, yeah, because yeah, Magwar can could. see and individual definitely. So Magwar could spin on the spot, and then um, yeah. his move would be then ninety degree turn upwards, go and ninety degree again. He could get a flank charge. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Individual. Is yeah, but it's not enough damage, yeah. is it? Is there's not damage. much point adding that to it as opposed to adding just picking up the max scout. Trying to finish up off the scouts. Yeah, yeah. getting to the flank, pushing the flame bearers, forcing the flame bearers to turn and shoot Magwar. They'll probably get the kill, but still. <laughs> probably. Yeah, I mean, counting on a second double one is well, the friendliest. It's more of, <laughs> it's only ten attacks on, what, fives and fours, something like that? So it's not that unreasonable that he just doesn't do any damage. He probably will. He's going for it. Look at that. He's seen the flank as well. And he's seen the hindered as well. <laughs> In which case, a hindered flank charge from rubble is as good as a front charge from rubble. <laughs> it's got more potential, though. You never know. Rolling 50 dice, you could get, get 20 hits. hits. On a sixes. You could technically do that and therefore be more mathematically potentially better in the flank. Hey, However, if nothing I'm else not if nothing else, rolling fifty dice on sixes is more fun than rolling twenty five dice on fives. And it's gonna use the wing it to ensure that it's well, you know, it's not a bad move, it just means that the wing it's Oh that's an interesting wing it play. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably I mean, that probably dead next turn because the volleyguns are gonna just pick him up. But, hey. Yeah, but that was true regardless. Yeah. yeah. Fives and fives. He's going to get. What does that work out as? Like about 17 hits, doesn't it? Is that right? 17 hits? Yes, about 17, 18 hits. 17, 18 hits, and then maybe six or seven damage, and it's not enough to even wave the fucking thing. <laughs> it's 16, 17, isn't it, at the moment? It's got an alright shot. It's just. I mean, you don't kill it. And then it's obviously it regens. It does. It does all its other not regen. It radiances and all that kind of crap. Here we go. Uh, then you die. And then at which point, what's then challenging the arrows again? Like if the arrows isn't hindered, like not, not hindered, uh, wavered, uh, it gets to where it lights again. Like yeah, yeah. because the because the rabble will get pushed across. He can back. He can assess it right. Then join on the right side against the rabble, or he can go push up on the uh, pick up a marker plunger. Right. Are these rabble in the front or are they in the flank? It's a good question. Oh. I don't know. Which yeah. rabble? The rabble in the middle against these honor guards. Definitely, they were definitely in the front. Front. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. in the front. That'd be that'd be even more galling, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad. So I guess it's similar to what we were saying about the. Duke, it's not like that alone is going to kill him. Even, I think even then, it's not like the odds aren't great. Um, you're relying on a, a melee 4 blast unit to do the damage. 
Which, we'll see how it does. It, it could get one hit, it could get five. It could, yeah. ro- it could roll It could roll 15 damage, it could roll three. Fours are swingy, three, especially... It? Yeah. Especially yeah. It's, like, it's double rolling, swingy. You're rolling it's a lot right. of random dice who are working together. Mm-hmm. It's swingy in a lot of ways, so... It's, we'll blast, it's blast plus melee four, so it is the mm-hmm. swingiest of swingies. This is the, the god of fours plus mm-hmm. the god of blast combined. Yeah. Um, this is what you play goblins for. As likely as getting ten. <laughs> but like, to Golden sort of expand Golden on that Golden point, <laughs> I I think it's true. Like, if you're a goblin player, by nature, like rolling fifty dice and doing three damage is part of your life. <laughs> like you should right. be used to this by now. Mm-hmm. And like going into a charge that could net you twenty damage or three. Um, <laughs> That's that's the life of a goblin player. If you don't like that, you should probably play a different list. Mm. <laughs> okay. The, oh, uh... oh, he can't bring the trombones in. Yeah, they're too far behind. You. That's that's one of my he... favorite things about the old dragon breath is that the old dragon breath for elves was speed six, so they could they could line up behind the infantry hard. The infantry moves up a little bit, and then both the dragon and breath are behind them. Can do the full six inch to clear the infantry hard fully, chaff for them, and then the infantry hard being elf archers or Thuranian sea guard, all of them shoot together because the, the um, leader points free, and then the, the because they're obviously they're, they're sat either side of the horde, they completely chaff it. So you're bringing in thirty elite breath, and you're bringing in Thuranian sea guard with all their shooting. Uh, and then the sea guard are free to then shoot again the turn after. Mm-hmm. But you okay. can't do that. I'm, I'm so play. glad you don't live in my country, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like Steven's right side a lot more this turn. He's... Bef- last turn, he'd like squared off outside of 10 inches from the foot guard and didn't let him charge. And then just let Alex back up. And now it looks like he's trying to just get stuck in there and force the fight. Rather than just get shot up from a few more turns. Mm. Yeah, but I, I still feel like he's got another turn of getting shot up. And like, ooh, One more. oh no, oh no, there's like rabble facing down my foot guard. Like, all day you'll take that. Um, right. I think, did he engineer it so he's at least charging off a hill? Yes. The rubble yeah. uh, maybe it's like exactly 50 <laughs> 50. That'll be a, a question. Um, okay, we, we got the uh, 65 point pain in the ass units coming out from behind their troll bodyguards to influence this battle. Is that. Oh, it was Regen on the Bruiser. So the bruiser is slowly undoing that misguided round of shooting <laughs> um, where he should have just focused everything on the bruiser. But the flame bear is about to take two um, trombones to the face, though. Yeah, it's yep. probably the flame bearers, I agree. I will return in a minute. Okay, so he starts blasting the flame bearers with his own shots. He's done a bunch of charges over here on the left hand flank with the rabble going into the arrows, the troll bruiser alone going into the honor guard. Um, it looks like at the moment we'll see what else mm-hmm. comes in to help, if anything. I th- I think it was his only legal charge. Okay, the blaster didn't have anything. Uh, I don't think the blaster, so it's too long. It doesn't mm-hmm. fit between the honor guard and the wizard. Gotcha. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen that initially, but yeah, it can't. That makes sense. And it needs to be touching the point it contacted. So it still right. needs to be so touching can't... the corner it hit. Uh, right. So it can't teleport past them. It can't hit the, exactly. Now, this is a question that came up in a previous one that they may be missing, but I want to, I want to clarify now, imagine the blaster moves in a way that it 
doesn't make contact with that corner, but it makes contact with its front right corner against the front of the um, honor guard. And then it sort of stays at its thinnest. At its spot, but it that lets it flip to the other side of the wizard? I don't know if that works or not. No, like it would actually, it, it would move. I'm drawing with my finger, which you can't see. But it would essentially, imagine the troll isn't there yet. It would try and shoot that gap and actually contact the honor guard further down yep. in between mm-hmm. the second and third. And then it wouldn't teleport. It would still be touching that point when it, it did its thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I legitimately don't know. Yeah. Another potential issue is he might need he might just have needed two pivots to make contact at all. Yeah, that's true. With uh yeah. I think that's I think that's the problem. He couldn't get to the front mm-hmm. if he took that charge with the luggage. The mm-hmm. luggage would have had to have pieced out um and cleared the way. Even still, the wizard might have... Ah, no, the wizard, he could probably get around. But the Luggets... Mm -hmm. All right. I don't actually know what's being rolled for. Um, He's blasting the flame bearers with uh, the war trombones. Oh, and then he did some nerve rolls that didn't kill things. Yep. Okay. And I think he did a, cool. yeah. Okay. So now so, he's doing the luggets against and the. They're. They just demolished the wizard on their own. Yeah. Because that's yep. how luggets roll. Sorry, guys. I've been shouting at you, and then I realized I was on mute. <laughs> I just noticed it was way quieter when Tom left and you muted yourself. Harsh, but fair. <laughs> I thought you were just ignoring me, but it turns out I'm an idiot. <laughs> it could be fun. Not it could sure be what's being. I think they're trying to make sure that he's in the right, like. So he's killed the wizard. That's good. At least he he's killed the thing. wizard. It looks like he's trying to decide where to pivot the luggets, and he's looking yep. at what the honor guard's options are before yep. he makes a final decision. Because he does yeah. not want the honor guard into the flank of the blaster, maybe, but that shouldn't be a problem. Cause I... Yeah, I think the blaster. I think you might get the blaster there. Uh, no, I don't think. I don't think the honor guard can make that pivot. I think the other issue is he's got the um, seductress in the flank. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, he doesn't because the war engine. No, he could probably still see, couldn't he? Because the war engine. I mean, can, if you're bothered, the, the seductress can just go after the blaster and sit the blaster down. Okay, so we got 50 attacks the on the Aralaz. Mm-hmm. And see we what got happens. six. That's not bad. Yeah. Ten twice. Fine. 16 is fine. Staying yeah. stone. Staying stone. 16 is a waiver, but it's still headstrong, isn't it? Oh, no, it is. That's right. No, 16 is the waiver number. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Never yeah, mind. Same Forget same the staying same stone. Same. Boo. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. headstrong or not. That's a good question. Let's have a yeah. look. It's not. Okay. And the man who knows has said it's not. It it's also means he's not down. getting the iron resolve. Yeah, which kind of sucks. And he can't back off. Ooh. He can't get away. So the blaster in the flank got decent hits and then 10, bl- ten blasts and then rolled five ones. Oh, that is horrible. Five damage. Mm-hmm. Oh. So this this honor guard is going to do what you should never let honor guard do, which is just one by one gobble up units <laughs> one one at a time with ample room to sort of yeah, iron us all. As well. That is horrible. Mm-hmm. Now, there is another blaster looking their way. It's... But... <laughs> But oh, you've just resolved one. You're about to radiance another. Yep. You're down to four. That blaster can't fit at the moment. It's, it's just kill like, the scouts. The scouts are dead at least. He's got to overrun. But then the Baron, being a combat character, can just go pick up Magua and yeah. do Does he need to overrun? Um. 
He just needs to be avoiding um, being hit by the uh, uh, by the honor guard and then overrunning into the rabble, doesn't he? Yeah, you get a free. So, where he was initially, like where he is right now, I'm not sure they can. Looks like he's sidestepping. Is what couldn't he was looking just, at. If he stayed where he is, couldn't they just withdraw, pivot like one degree? And then their right corner would hit him before they hit the. Uh... No, because he'd be in the rear and he would have to hit the back, and that'd be hitting yeah. the right side of Magua. That is a very good point. That is a very good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was protected where he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Baron is just going to pick up Magua for free. <laughs> the bear. Baron's going to walk could. over and be like, yeah, he, you he, forgot, I am not a standard bearer. He is not a standard bearer. He is a legit right. combat. It's not. Oh, oh. He's got he's four got attacks four on three to crush mm. one. And we will we will notice Alex legitimately pick someone axe. that looks like they have four attacks. Yep. <laughs> and not like just standard bearer. <laughs> he's not holding a big flag. He's holding a big axe. I mean, he's, he's also not holding a loot. So uh, points off for no WYSIWYG. He's got some, <laughs> he's got some strings attached to the axe, actually, if you were really, really close to it's a It's a harp axe. You, you, we're going like, to zoom in now and show us where the strings are. Don't, right? don't zoom in. It's not there. Don't zoom in. Yeah, I, I did. I did. Um, it's not there. <laughs> Tom, just full of shit. It's, it's too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I would like to say, though, in Alex's favor, after I've bitched at him several times about his use of ILS and Wing Pegasus being different things, um, the wizard on Pegasus is actually on Pegasus rather than Aralus now because they can't take Aralus. However, the wizard on Aralus is still actually on a griffin, which isn't a dog. No, it's so, not a dog. Uh, but um, is there a dog in UB or is it just wolves? There is because if you look at the honor guard, they're on dogs. Well, they're on wolves. So why can't you just put the Aralus on a wolf? No, those are just wolves that he colored brown. <laughs> Wolves come in brown, all right? Wolves come in brown. Right, they do, but it, like by default, they're gray, and he just okay. made them brown. <laughs> so we have it's the wolf. We have the waiver. We have the waiver here. We have the nothing on the honor guard. Um, mm -hmm. He hasn't fought his troll yet. Right? Uh, he has. He did oh. one damage, and then it got iron resolved. Good God. And mm -hmm. takes two thunders off them, which is the important thing, because otherwise that troll is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> that troll still might be fucked. But if it's not, there's a blaster in the flank of those honor guard. And oh, that's, that's, that's killed killed by the, yes, isn't it? too bad. Um, uh, that troll should survive it. Yep. But I think yeah, the current problem for the goblins is, is um, yes... You roll your first volley gun, which does the damage on it, against the rabble hard. Depending on how good you go there, you then put the second one in. Uh, if that doesn't go very well, then you put the third one into the luggage troop and just try to pick the luggage mm -hmm. up. It's possible if the volley guns kill two scoring units here. Um, right. Big. And picking up those luggets would be very helpful for the honor guard. Yes, it saves the honor guard, and picking up the rabble also saves the arrows. Um there's no inspiring, is there? So that's the big issue. Hmm. No inspiring. Oh, you mean for the goblins on the left? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had the king there, but he died a while ago. Yeah, um, he did. He did the, the annoying thing when you're inspiring sources. Also, a hundred and thirty point chariot unit. You kind of want to fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Varanger know how that goes. Yeah, he did the right thing and forced the arrows to back off, but then he took a flank charge. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're moving into Alex's turn three, right? <clears throat> yeah, he's in the process, isn't Sure. He? I mean, he hasn't moved the, the seductress yet, so yeah. That's a frontal charge or a flank. I think seductress goes into the blaster, to be honest. Can you see, can uh, you see the blaster? Can you see the blaster? <sighs> yeah, yeah, the, the blaster's um, high. Yeah. Five, but you can just turn this sort of just to the side and get more of the angle on it to do it. Blaster is height three because it's a chariot. Yeah, I think he can angle her at a point so her leader point can see. 
kanji? Like, behind the Mawpup launcher. Yeah, maybe. I think he can draw that line pretty easily. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I say that, and then I check, and I'm not so confident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm confident. You can draw the line. You can draw the line, um, Brindley. If you just click on like a yeah. point of the unit, it, you can draw a line. It is close. Uh huh. The problem is you can't draw the line zoomed in. I I'm not too sure that Marpup's actually in the hill. I don't think either it's unit's. Really on. I don't think the Marpup's on the hill, which means that it doesn't get the height added to it, which is important. Which means she can just Marpup. see the blaster over everything. That. Yeah. Yeah, but then the blast is behind the hill. So you No, because it's partially on the hill, so no, that's true. Just yeah, it's over hill, no problem. It's, charging, it's still that higher is. than the hill. And the more pups isn't on the hill, therefore it's not making the hill higher. Yeah. So, so it's, it's higher than the more pop launcher. And because it's on the hill, it ignores the hill because it's just got a leader point. Well, exactly. On that. Yep. Complex but understandable. Oh, Baron's going for it. Yeah. Or not. No. <laughs> I can do oh no, hang on. I mean it's got it. It's not it's not a problem. Right. But like Alex started to do it and then undid it. He wants to know what to do with the flame bearers first. The fire rises. Shoot back and start picking up war trombones? <laughs> Has anything died apart from the Goblin King? Has anything died apart from that? The Scouts? Well, the scouts yeah, is... Um, a Blaster? A Blaster? That has died as well, yeah. Yeah, it died yeah. attacking. Yeah, yes. yeah, the Blaster that flanked the Honor Guard died. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of the thing. <laughs> we talked about all the scoring units he has, but we, we forgot that some of his scoring units kill themselves if they attack. <laughs> he still has, like, 10-plus scoring units that don't kill themselves. Yeah. This is a, still an incredibly not bloody game. <laughs> I think it's about to be. It's, it's At least the left up. is. Building up. The right side is just going to be slow. Yes, it's probably worth noting, isn't it? Um, Alex needs... Uh, Alex, Alex needs 13 points to win the event. As long as he gets more more points than... Um... Oh, actually, no, because where, where is... Uh... Alex needs 15 because he's coming into it ahead of Steven. Steven needs, I want to say it's 18, but... It okay. He needs 17 points to draw with Tom and 18 to, to win. Because if it comes down to it, it's going to be kill points, isn't it? And I can't see kill points on him. No, I've got some big wins. Um, if it's a draw, it's going to be a relatively bloodless draw by the looks of things. Because Goblin, if he's been playing Goblins the entire time, his wins aren't usually going to be that big. <laughs> um, goblins. Yeah, and I guess in eight, though, I don't think we're going to see an 18 point draw. Um, yeah, if he's checking his wins like, out, he's got it's a, a theoretically power, possible, a but I don't, I'm not seeing it. Steven's wins aren't big, which is why it's close between me and him, because while I've lost games, I've lost a game, it's, it's right. fairly killing me. No, I think, if, I think if we're looking at in a, or at a draw, I think the Alex potential of getting 15 points to still win the event is the more likely like, scenario. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my odds myself of pulling first out of fucking nowhere were low. Um, <laughs> fucking nowhere. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Completely undeserved. I <laughs> deserved a fucking win at all. Um, well, it's yeah. been a tight, tight. I mean, there's not many uh, uh, many players who've actually won all five games, have they? Um, no. Or all six games, sorry. Even it's just two were on five wins. I think that's it. It is literally it. Everybody else has won, uh, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. lost at least one game. Yeah, or they've, they've, bled, one, they've bled a win at least or somewhere along the line, yeah. So, um, it's the bottom of turn three. 
which means mm -hmm. goblins are up next for. Is it? For the... It's fucking twenty twenty two at this point. <laughs> and uh, what I did want to talk about though is how are they set up to actually grab these objectives? Because mm -hmm. you know, four or five, six time time starting to run out on turns. The issue, like those blasters are good for capturing parts of the game, but they are angling to be used and killed. Um. I don't see the Goblin Horde on the left surviving, the Luggit Gang surviving with the other troop, the the trolls, the Trollbrews might by a fluke of um, dice survive, um, but the Honor Guard are going to get bled as well. I think he's going to lose one Horde of Honor Guard, and what happens on the right side here because there's there's five scoring units that can realistically get to the, the center rear token, but he can't afford to pull anything away because fo the the Foot Guard are so hard. Mm -hmm. Did it rhyme? Mm -hmm. Foot guard also just outscore anything over there, unless Steven starts putting multiples in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then the issue. remember, Alex still has this lightning bolt six Pegasus, who can just fly off and grab mm -hmm. a token on turn six. Yeah, he can't I'm, I'm... from exactly where he is right now, but yeah, but turn five, turn six, like can can start mm -hmm. doing some some sweet moves and that sort of thing. I'm not sure, but it, it looks a little like Steven lined up in his plain kill and we'll start thinking about scenarios in a moment. Um, I mean, that's how you play this game, right? Yeah. Um, because it, it doesn't look like there was a real plan. Like there was a plan to engage and like cover his troops as they engage and fight. Um, but it doesn't look like there was a real plan to like claim that objective in the middle of his sort of, back um or the one on the far side like maybe that's kuzlo's job but that seems weird um there's just a lot of objectives that seem to be sitting there and that he's going to move right past and have no real plan for holding possibly so. he's sure. decided all three because of some poor bulligan choice he put all three bulligans into that lucky troop Ooh. I don't really like. I'd have liked to have split them up, but I think it's the nature of him rolling so crap that he's had to put all three. I don't know. I think the Lugged Troop is kind of the biggest else. threat, and that Rabble Horde would take quite a bit to take off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the Rabble Troop is the sorry, the Rabble Horde is going to be hindered if it goes back into the um, Duke, which is a good shot at surviving because it doesn't do much if if right. all damage really. Bones are taking some damage. Mm -hmm. Was that six damage from six lightning bolt? No, it was two. Why is the trombone got six on it then? That was a flame bearers, and they are um, more capable of doing that with uncovered shots. It was good, it's good shooting, but yeah. Yeah, the flame bearer shot the one on our right, and then mm -hmm. the lightning bolts went into the ones on the left. Mm. Correct, and that's six and four, which should threaten Wait, them. Mm, not if he's wrong. There we go. So he killed one, but I think he rolled a seven total against the other. So he's still in, in the game. There are eight tens, so... Oh. Here's the three on the nerve test. That's what you get. You shouldn't break things with a three on the nerve test. Okay. Um, Flag boy just did. <laughs> awesome. So Magwa's dead. Yep, yeah, he's gone. So overrun? You know, overrun? Why not? Overrun. Overrun, um, do it. Because the more he overruns, the more he pulls inspiring away from the right, but I don't think that's an issue. I think you overrun. No, yeah, it's, it's because it's very inspiring with it being Rodia. Um, it's still going to cover the middle foot guard, whereas the the middle right foot guard aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Right, he's in. Yeah, get in there. Fuck him up. <laughs> Fuck him up. Oh, what was, what's this? Oh, that was a backup, oh. not an overrun. Never mind. Okay. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Get him off. Now you deserve to roll really well with your honor guard and be like two damage away from a break. Oh, I was going to say the honor guard are just going to kill him anyway. 
No, they're not, because they only crush but, one, don't they? The more important thing is that it stops the fucking rabble from being able to maneuver all the way down to let the fucking blaster yeah. in. Yeah. That's You're bomb. not getting a double charge. Like the that blaster guy is looking true. like the dumb bitch that it is. Yeah. Did he? For... Oh no, Seductress killed the war machine. Got yeah. it. Got it. Yeah. Seductress wow. did what flying combating monsters do when left alone in the backfield. You just mm. forget about them for two turns and then your war machines are gone. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'd take the war right. machine at the moment and. I don't think that's worth it. I don't think it's worth it at all. Because if you no. get lucky here, that blast is going to pick up the honor guard. And why? Yep. Why should the honor guard I think I think the blaster would have been the better target. Because the honor guard being crusher one as well is is huge, isn't it? Uh, he's still yes, in six. Is, but that's not enough to kill a fifty. Was it twelve, fourteen? It, it is if he rolls in. Oh no, he just yeah, wavered yeah. it. Never mind. See, that's it. It, like a flank charge, it's not off a hill, but it doesn't need it. <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, are you inspired? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Baron's de or Duke is definitely close enough to be inspiring them. So the Honor Guard are going to come in, are going to take it from the flank. Yes, 100%. Now, Down with the troll being wavered, they can probably take it. I don't know. It's a lucky roll, isn't it? If he hits, I said probably. <laughs> it's swingy. It is swingy. Here and we go. It must be the goblin's turn because he's taking the flank charge. <laughs> Look, that, that could have done another guy doing it. In one turn. In one turn, you know, six dice hitting on threes, d6 damage. He could roll twenty hits and twos. That could kill him outright, couldn't it? And now he's finding out why it was such a bad idea. To... Mm. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. And this is why the Baron should have Stay done put. what yep. Barons do. I'm a very yeah. least. You're not a flag guy. You're a Baron. Get in there. And how, much, how much damage is actually on them? Is, um, mm. is it seven damage or is it 11 damage on them? On who? On the rabble in the middle. Eight. Eight. It's eight. And the Baron wouldn't have killed him, of course, but now you no, see, he would have blasted out of the, the game. Yep. If they're rallying and they've been down there at the start of this, this battle, uh, he won't be and as nearly as worried about all this going on at the moment because both other guys would be essentially dash 20 nerve. Yeah, and so I mean, that, that was the classic sort of second edition Rodia thing. It's like the... Battle shrines stay with the honor guard to make them the nerve they used to be before the nerf. <laughs> yes, it, 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 the, the the second edition thing was the battle shrine stayed near the the honor guard so that you could you could pump up their um, killing potential. Like you, there were twenty four attacks already, so you gave them your fury and your headstrong. But now that they have enough at will, you don't need that so much. Mm -hmm. um, so you pump up the killing potential back to where they were before. So you, you give them the, the Caterpillar, you give them J-Boot, so you give them Brew of, uh, brew of um, Sharpness just to keep them... God, that's right. expensive. <laughs> and Double Will does that job now, but they still... I think the, the Honor the Guard being near the um, Battle Shrine just keeps them up there at that level where they are ridiculously hard, ridiculously hard to get rid of because the Dash 20 with Iron Evolve and they need to mm -hmm. be... Yeah, I I could definitely see benefit to having the battle shine on the left this game. <laughs> uh, Elliot, you're technically correct. Also, I have had a lot to drink. So <laughs> technically, I uh, yeah. Look, I mean, I I love the battle shrine with the honor guard because it, it just pushes them up into that like eighteen twenty, which is just horrible. But you have to keep pace with them. You have to keep pace, and I don't think on the left hand side they'd be able to do that easily. <laughs> I don't think it when because you sat with the volley guns, you bait in the volley guns. You've got this little interplay of overlapping charge acts and all that kind of shit. It's not a problem with Rivardia because they're not going to go generally more than seven inch forward. So you'll go five inch up. You'll define the line with your battle shine because it can because it's hard as nails. Um, and then you'll you're lightning and you'll keep up with them as you go because you've got that five inch plus a six inch bubble to reach the back end of the, the honor guard when they charge. It's not usually an issue. Um, despite the difference in movement values. 
And it's not like the honor guard are normally on a flank, bombing up the flank and turning in. They're they're no. not that cav mm -hmm. unit usually. No. They're uh, no, they attract far too much attention. Mm -hmm. They're the counter puncher. Yeah, um, yeah they are scary enough that no one's going to let them have a flank. Right. Um, that being said, the uh, when we talk about the battle shrine is good with honor guard. The battle shrine is good with everything. It's, yes. it's yeah, yeah. one of the best units in the game. Um, yeah, it is yeah, easy. Cool. It, 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 it's probably the I think it's probably the best support piece in the game. I yeah, I have a hard time disagreeing with that. Like, I can't argue with something which can fight. It's fearless with defense five dash fourteen. It's got lightning six and it just rally two. It's like ah, it's mm -hmm. all things for all men and halflings. <laughs> oh boy. Um, what do you guys think the goblins do on the right? Stand there and keep getting to shine. I mean, the question <laughs> in chat. Got the objectives to the uh, Rodia one without fighting. The... Can the troll through through the pivot after disengage? I think the, the answer is... to that's no. Yes, it. Unless he backs it up. If that pivot becomes within inch, it can't. When you use the withdraw of one inch pivot, you can't. Yes, you can't. You can't. come out of the inch there for no. the normal roll. Like, you can't that's use it with true. withdraw. He also could just back up or do the one inch withdraw back up like. You know, half an inch, and then still pivot because he's nimble. Um, so the answer is no. In that position, you can't. You, essentially, the withdrawal works. Is that if you use the withdrawal, you can't ignore it for the one inch rule. So you can't do that. But you could move, as you say, half an inch, then mm -hmm. turn, and then move. Yep, exactly. And that's something he can only do because he's nimble. Tom, are you giving him an answer? Yeah, I'm doing it at the moment. Okay, I, I saw your phone out, and that's why I figured. Otherwise, I would. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just chatting girls up. I don't actually care. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's got so many ladies on the, uh, you know, being, you know, such a good Kings of War player. Mm. It's what I lead with. They're on the hook, right? You know, they can't, they can't leave. You know. No, they're asking me questions. Sure. Um. Is the troll bruiser finally? Ah, troll bruiser's fully healed. Yeah, He's yeah. crazy. I love troll bruisers. They are just ridiculous. Well, it's the it's the thing you always run into with regen, which is when you decide to hurt them, you need to commit to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you you commit to hurting the regen unit until it's off the board, or you don't bother because yeah. then you end up with just that thing that had damage no longer does, and you feel terrible about yourself. It's interesting from both sides of the um, both sides that they have either Iron Resolve and Radiance of Life to try and put in a position that you go, I've caused two or three points of damage, and they go, I don't care. I can Iron Resolve it, I can Radiance of Life it, and I'm back to a position I don't, it doesn't make a difference. Um, same with the region, you know. So the, the issue over here is, and it's possible they're now deciding to do this, which is turn four. <laughs> uh, you're not going to break those foot guard with what you have left over there, probably. Um, over the course of the rest of the game. Yeah. So um, just hold the objectives, I guess. Like, how do they and survive? Now, <laughs> what happens if the foot guard just walk forward and take that hill from you? Uh, I think if one comes forward to take the hill, why it would it only to... be one? Okay, so if both come forward to take the hill, I think you are now starting to expose the angles he wants with Kuzlo and the fact that he is one, two, three, four, five, six units against a, a lesser amount. Yeah. Um, like that's, you're moving him into the trap. That's uh, possible. But we'll see. And yeah, Kuzlo changes it. Without Kuzlo, I think he can just walk forward and keep all those units in his front. Okay. I'm struggling to see how Alex here wins this scenario at this point. That's what I'm I'm worried about. I'm that's, worried about him. That's a question, yeah. He has he also the, he seems has to be able to do it, but it was relying on all three of those scoring units on the left side to be alive. 
which isn't likely. Okay, so he used the war trombone to shoot mm -hmm. more flame bears. And mm -hmm. hopefully got them. Yep. I will point out uh I didn't see when they actually did it, but he did withdraw the troll, back him up about an inch, and then pivot him. Yeah. Because yeah. he's outside of an inch now, so that now it's legal. Yeah. Once you use a withdraw moment, you act essentially as easy would normally. Mm -hmm. Um it's not quite the same because of wording, but it pretty much is. Um, so yeah, that's that's what you got to do. All right. So those blasts were garbage, but he still did ten damage. Yes, because he rolled really well. However, they had dash eighteen, essentially. And that's thirteen. Don't give a fuck. Oh, I love Rod. I love Rod, and I love on God so much. Oh. So good. Mm. Yeah. So the catching people up, the blaster charged into the side, did some damage, blew itself up, but did not break the That's honor guard. Weird. And this um, is the issue with this Rodius is not the Rodius, the goblins is they don't have the follow up shooting to put these things off. No. All right. There's gonna be a bunch of wounded animals on the side mm -hmm. of the uh, Rordia list, if it goes well for Rordia, they will have a bunch Ooh. of Ooh! And then the blaster in the front of the other, other honor guard only did four, because it missed with two of its attacks. Yep. Yep. And then in the front, we have four more from the goblins, oh, is going to be 12. Okay. If okay. they were 18, oh. 20, but uh, as they are now, you, you, you care. 19, mm. he's dead. Yep. If you had if you had your battle shot there, they'd be fine because you don't double you what you don't double on the next turn. You'd be fearless. You pick up the uh, rabble hard. The things the other um, obviously blasters blown itself up. Mm -hmm. uh, and who cares? But well, yeah, if the battle shot affected the whole board. Yeah, but if the no, battle shot but... deployed over there in the middle of the honor guard next to the volley guns where they should have been, which is how I would have deployed them. Wouldn't have been an issue because A, you'd have covered the um, rabble for me able to get an unhindered flank charge because that's where the battle shine would have been. That wouldn't have happened. It'd have covered both honor guard hordes anyway, so you wouldn't have to worry so much about them dying. So the uh, right side honor guard would have been alive. That's, this is what they do. Like, it's not doing anything on the right, but. Mm. Okay. I mean. Yeah, on the right, it's a lightning bolt wizard. Yeah. On the left, it's a battle shrine to you're, using you're, all of its tools. Yeah. You're already winning the uh, range fight on that side anyway. Um, right. The battle shrine could be doing that from the left side of the board. Right, and the foot guard... Uh, well, this game obviously haven't been making use of the rally. But this, no. I mean, this makes... And also, like, it, the way it sort of works is that rally two on honor guard is way more useful than it is on foot guard. It's right. increasing a higher percentage of their nerve. Um, like applying rally to lower nerve units is theoretically mm -hmm. more effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm, I've been thinking about running um, a Roddy list with like four or five troops and knights because if the battle trying to keep it up with them and you've got Indomba Will, they're technically dash 15 nerve. Yep. Situationally. Situationally. It's, but that's a troop of cavalry. Coming at defense five dash fifteen. I don't know. Just on principle, I don't pay for indomitable will on troops. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to give it a go because knight troops are completely partners, and nobody has ever run them because they are shit. They yeah, are I don't think they're, they're shit partners. in that case. Yeah, in that case, they're not shit. In that case, they've got a purpose. But I like to. I like the idea of using stuff which has no purpose. You're know, like logically thinking, but then you do the little things that they can do down the line. Well, you find something really good. Um, in in the V two historical, there was the Scottish army that had foot knights that were like fifteen, seventeen nerve, twelve attacks uh, at regiment size, and you had easy rallying in the historical lists. They were running around as seventeen, nineteen, um, mm -hmm. defense five, crushing strength one, like blocks, and could make a horrible, horrible list for people mm -hmm. to fight against. Never played against historical ever. So I don't know, yeah. It, it's not it was never a UK thing. I think you guys yeah. got got a bit of purchase over there, but for some yeah, reason people were allowing them in tournaments over here, even though the book specifically told us not to. 
Uh, it's because they weren't powerful. Like they, they had some certain tricks, but their tricks were empowering infantry. Their tricks See, were empowering mediocre units, like big empowerments, but for mediocre. Yes units. and no. They had so they, there was a broken, or maybe not broken, but there was a very powerful infantry build with the Romans, where essentially uh, you had a bunch of defense yeah. five, crush strength yeah. one, foot guard. I wouldn't and, say broken. It was competitive. Right, right, yeah. I corrected myself. The one that was broken and just had ridiculous interactions that didn't make any sense was the Mongols. What you're talking about is kingdoms of men, but they do certain things slightly about the kingdoms of men, who at the time were an average at best army. Well, no, it was like kingdoms of men with 50-point battle shrines. Which is like an an average army. (laughs) (laughs) In terms of power level, level, it goes from being kingdoms of men, which is like Bottom third to like <laughs> mid. Uh. Anyways, like, Bull, Bullcon was a thing. Bullcon with the um, anti peel. Anyways, yep, that, that yep. a- Bullcon. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways. Yes, game. So there's a game being played. Um, no, there isn't. Don't like and it. I agree. I don't know how Alex takes objectives. Yeah, I think he's caught a lot of breaks here, which he probably didn't uh, he probably didn't deserve the breaks that he's caught. If I'm being honest. Um, so, his honor guard can pick up the troll. Probably. And yes. then they're going to own that outside objective. If, if they, they want don't, it. it's going to be quite close for them, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, they can also spin back towards the middle and try and take out that rabble. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they can... They can't quite catch both at the same time, can they? Mm, it'd be tough. I it's think they're picking inches, one or the other. Outside of each token, they're about 12 inches away, yeah. which means you need to be 6 inches. So they probably can actually. This um, is interesting. It's I think it's really interesting, interesting it? uh, Kyle, because you've got... You've got the wild charge on the luggets as well, haven't you? That's yep. Just... Now he did this time verify he can if he takes this and kill and gets the kill. Well, he would have been able to pivot and put everyone in front, but it looked like he opted not to do it anyway. I mean, do you want to know? In terms of like points damaged at the moment, the current kill points, Alex has got six hundred and seventy-five, which basically means he's got a plus one. But at the same time, Steve has got. 450 that gives them a plus one. So if it's a draw now, it would put them both on 11 points. Plus it's not enough. The, plus, right, the if, plus the objectives. So it's it not going to 13 each, maybe, you know? Yeah, um, but 13 isn't 15. It's the live, I, the live table. I don't know. And I'll be honest, Alex probably, even if he is aware that he needs 15 points. He probably isn't thinking about it right now. We should be. I mean, like um, Steve should be um, working on eighteen points. I've I've gone into table six games knowing exactly what I need to win, and I've played for that exact point level. Like yeah. you, you should be because that's what you need. Like especially if you're, if you're, if you're, table, if you're not playing to win, then why are you playing? <laughs> you're going for it. You're all in. Three weeks. Three weeks of preparation. All you need is <laughs> to, know, to know what you need to win. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Three weeks. Okay, so, so he is going for the trombone, which I like. Until he rolls double ones and just loses an honor guard regiment. No, but or, I mean, or foot guard I, hard. I actually think he's in. Like, there's a very real possibility that everything on the left side of the table, um, you know, Stephen doesn't kill another thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good. The, it's a very good shot that happening. The the seductress mm-hmm. and the baron have gone in on the rabble, and the mm-hmm. rabble already has eight damage, and is gonna just start mm-hmm. getting chopped up by those two, um, mm-hmm. and like they'll they'll finish that rabble horde on its own. On all right, can see it. Yeah. All right, um, and, I don't uh, think he uh, is. They've got a good shot uh, at a waiver. Yeah. I think they've got a good shot at a waiver. Killing them's a I bit don't, of a risk. I don't mean this turn. I mean in yeah. You mean combats. next turn. Okay, yep. except now Alex undid half his turn, so we'll see what oh. he does. It doesn't, Anyways, it doesn't I... matter as long as that um, if the Arades goes down, right? 
that makes a big difference because he's got to be able to claim those two objectives on the left hand side. Well, one of the two objectives at least. And that's what I was sort of, mm -hmm. what I was getting to is like, for me, the most important thing right now is that Aerolas needs to get the hell out of Dodge and survive. Yeah. Um, because right. that is a scoring unit. And on the left hand side, those are now at a giant yeah. premium. But it how did they do that? The wing it turns around can just blast weapon it with its stupid attacks but it has for no apparent reason. Okay. Let, 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 Tell let, us how let, you really feel. Let's look at this as from a different point of view. Let's just say how many points has Steven got? How many points do you feel that he can guarantee at this stage? Three. I think he can get three at most. You think only three? Which which three are they gonna be then, Tom? I think he's gonna either have to commit the trolls, therefore he loses the top middle objective, because I reckon the, the Luggit Gang regiment will die for the line of ball. Which means he can only really capture three. The yeah. trolls can't afford to back off because of the foot guard, which means uh -huh. he's relying on the wing it to pick up another one. Assuming the wing it survives, it's only top of four, uh, and I reckon the Duke on wing dialers will survive. I reckon he's going to get a max of three. So, I am going to interject, the Luggets only took one, and now we'll see. Alex, it looks like he's just going to pump everything into, yep, this rabble horde. Oh, no, roll your volley guns first. Is he going to get cover from that? He's going to get cover from that, surely. For sure. Having, having the arrows in front means For that, sure yeah. that he's got cover. Right. Yeah. Why? Just... I do agree. He should be rolling the volley guns first because they don't have another shot. Oh, or the wizard can just roll back. It. He's double one, the wizard. Well, then, in which case, it doesn't fucking matter, does it? Don't fucking matter. <laughs> oh my Crap God. off and one volley gun. These rolls. Wow. Keeping things interesting. So he did three damage together, like all together. Oh, terrible. They should do seven. Mm -hmm. So now those goblins are only on 11 damage. Yeah. Mm. And he rolls Double a four on nerve. Yeah. So the arrows, the arrows didn't go anywhere. Didn't do anything. No, the arrows spun around to put the other horde in his front, and then he looks like banked on killing the horde Gosh. in his rear on shooting. Oh, so Zoom on the arrows. Is he given a flank or a front? In his, in his it's the front. It's he's going to be. A, is it? Yeah, easy. Look at it again. Which way is the actual like, arrows facing? It's facing towards the rabble on the right. I believe. Is it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. The arrows is facing the rabble horde on the right. I think that yellow bit is its nose. Mm -hmm. I like it is. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand that, was, that you had really, really good odds, but you had really good odds, not certain odds. Why are you doing this? Like You've got two individuals who are pretty nails and shouldn't die. So, <laughs> can somebody Fine. ask the question? Can somebody ask the question? Which way is the arrow facing? Because this is huge. No, it is definitely facing to the right, for it's sure. Facing one. Yeah. All of that problem. Right. It's going this way. <laughs> you saw that, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, he wavered the troll on the left again. He did he on the left? Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, and he just killed that horde with an 11 nerve on the right. Boom. So I guess that does that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was it was a touch and go. So you'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll definitely take that rear charge on his air it was, it was a good it was a good r roll there. He's still going to kill that rabble horde. But now he, I think he sacrificed the Duke and Alice for fucking nothing. Yeah. Why? I, don't, I, don't, I think I either way, it's a risk. Him. We will ask him. We'll ask him. We'll find out why he did this bad thing. I think uh, either way, he's taking a risk, and this is the one he I chose know. to take. Because on the left hand side, he can only claim one of those. If he if the Arles dies, he can only claim one of those two objectives on the left hand side. If he keeps the wing it alive, then the wing it can get into a position where he can just claim the objective last time. I'd have liked the seductress to be hounding that wing it like the bitch that it is. <laughs> yeah, but these tiny little bits of terrain are great for a uh, for a wing it because he can just fly to the other side of the. He can even fly to the other side of that actual terrain, 
and still target the honor guard and if he yeah. targets the honor guard you never know he could cause you've got to then worry about the volleyguns because the volleyguns are covering everything that's in front of them yeah but he just he just lands on behind the body guns can he lie behind the body guns and still be in range um pro yes probably but that's only for one round um one round's enough isn't it and then seductress is covering a decent amount of terrain herself is the issue if he takes out the honor guard and the um um what's it called the um Arles, he doesn't give a shit <laughs> So at the moment, he, they're both on a minimum of six, aren't they? Even if they lose. In terms of, it's hard to count objectives at this stage. Yeah. Um, but I think Stephen, to a certain extent, has grabbed at least two. I'd have thought. Zoom out again, Brindley. Can you zoom out again? I'm I'm not in UP for this. You can easily say that he's grabbed two, hasn't he? Would that be um, the one on the right-hand side and the one nearest his deployment zone, either with the troll bruiser or the troll horde? He can grab that. And if he grabs that and gets a draw, it's not enough. But if he gets a win, it is enough. Yeah, they're starting to kill more, mm -hmm. but it's still, 18 still going to be hard to get to. Well, I think uh, one thing for me is there's this spicy wizard on peg with boomstick still. Spicy wizard. Yep. Mm -hmm. spicy. Yep, I think crispy. that wizard just takes the middle objective. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. free to go grab an unclaimed objective. Mm -hmm. um, and that's huge right now. Same um, as the wing it, though. The wing it can do the same thing, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Can it? It can uh, claim one of three mm -hmm. objectives you place them The by. issue for the wing it is it's not as capable of doing it as the wizard is. The wizard can pretty much do it with impunity because there's no shooting to turn around and go, oh, I've got lightning ball six, I can throw on that wizard. Yeah. Whereas there is 36 polygon shots that they can do it. There's a seductress who's lying around and she's very, very, very spicy. Mm -hmm. And there's also obviously the rest of the lightning bolt, the, the, the rod you have that can do the same job. Like that that wing it's got to survive two turns. Now, if the wing it pivots right and just flies toward that same middle objective that the wizard's looking at, then it's relatively safe from shooting. It really just has to do with the battle shrine, and depending on when the wizard goes in, uh, it'll get picked up by the baron or the seductress or both. That's true. It do, it would have to deal with those two in combat. Yep. So the seductress uh, in the general has, is just another threat to it. The wing it does have an ungodly amount of nerve. However, it's not inspiring. What's that? Yeah. I'm just the complaining about the wing it again being absolutely ridiculous. I was, for no apparent reason. I, I was going to say with two damage on it, much. two damn points of damage, it's still better nerve than the than the wizard is. <laughs> yeah, but if you find at ten twelve, it's got thirteen fifteen nerve. So I know. Then a regiment of trained yeah. infantry, and it's two fucking goblins. I'm gonna have to think of a third reason for them to have that high nerve. You're gonna have to, because it makes no fucking sense to me, mate. See like this goblins. one? The way he's got it modeled is better, because the goblin doesn't have a thirteen fifteen. The monster bat does. How much nerve does a goblin king on chariot have? Less. Is it? No, it's all for thirteen fifteen. Okay. 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 Right, two let's put it this way. There's two okay. goblins on a war engine, right? Or a monster no. in this case. Two goblins on a pallet is what you've got. <laughs> okay. Would so, you feel better if we called it a goblin king on wing it? Yeah, but then you have to be But anyway. No, yeah. because then it'd be a flying monster with seven attacks. Yeah. Yeah. The equivalent, be let's, let's be the equivalent is going to be a war trombone. Because a war trombone at least can move and shoot, right? You can't equate it to a, like a more pop launcher. So essentially, it's the same thing with wings, right? How much how much nerve does a Morpop launcher have? Sorry, like a um, a war trombone have? Goblins eight ten, nine eleven. 
It's it means go, it, it's goblins. It can, it can, it's goblins. It could be eight ten. It could be thirteen eight, fifteen. Eight, <laughs> a, worn a worn trombone. has got eight ten. Right. It's got the same so defense. It if it's two crewmen on a war engine, for it to be eight ten. The midly, the winger is twice the price of a uh, war trombone. Right, but that's because it flies and it's unit strength and its shooting attack is equally pretty much as good. And it has the iron sky roll. It's not as good, let's be honest. Ten shots hitting on a four plus compared to three shots hitting on a four plus with blast D3. Piercing one. Steady aim, vicious. Anyway, um... What should be happening for the uh, what should the goblin player be doing here? Pretty he much, be about, he should be complaining about wing it to the RC right now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why are you doing this? Just complain now. Um, oh. he should be protecting his tokens as long as he can protect the um, the tokens he's got. Okay, he can do a decent job. Is he Which trying to stretch? Is he trying to stretch that goblin unit between two? I think tokens? he is. Yeah, is that yeah. what he's going for? Okay. Well, at the moment, he doesn't have that. Not no, yet. but it's only for five. And then he sends other people in to go do some fighting. Right. Now, I, I haven't even got to play a game. I haven't even got to play about Dud yet. Mm. Is this what top of that? five at the bottom of four? Is this, this top, is of, top five of five? five. Yeah. Nah, went first. Went first. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Bomb. So it's two turns. Hmm. You just chaff up, don't you? You just surely you just chaff up the honor guard and just go right, two fingers, right? Um, use Madfall and go, there you go. Two magnificent goblins. So I mean, oh that, God. that explains it right there. Magnificent goblins with their flying machines. Oh my they God! They go no. tiddly up, 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 and then tiddly up, down, down, down. Is Mostly that, tiddly down, 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 down. Like, let's be real. Sam, I love you, man. I'm not sure exactly what you're you're saying, but yes. <laughs> Oh, it's a paw roll from the goblins in the rear of the winged arrows. Only three damage. That's a waiver. I mean, what do you expect? They're oh goblins. Yeah. No, but... no, it's a 17, isn't it? That's a dead, isn't it? Is that. No, oh, no, it's only 12, 15. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, that's rough. That is rough. Yep, yeah, that's going to potentially give the arrow as. No, because you still get the wing it. The wing it will still, as long as the arrow doesn't escape too far, the wing it can possibly j drop bombs and get that one point or two points of damage well, to kill them. The arrow isn't going anywhere this turn. Yeah. Unless the wing it decides to go and drop bombs on him, in which case it's not capturing objectives in turn six, which is what it needs to do. If it goes um, and drops bombs, then the seductress is like anything that gets that wing it into. Proximity yeah. of the seductress is bad news for that wing. That that wing, it, the only way it, it can drop bombs on the arrows to kill it, as well as claim objectives, go to go for the middle objective. In which case, it's dead because there's yeah. three volumes looking after it. I don't think it, all it needs to do is just to die, just mm -hmm. deny. So I think Alex is realizing now he's in a bad spot with this foot guard horde. Yep. Because yeah. I don't think he has a way to not have a luggage gang in his flank. He can turn, I think he, uh, a roughly 90 degree turn um, clockwise will give him a front from the trolls and the luggets. Will just, it be a front from the trolls? Or to clear the building, is he going to have to make it a flank from the trolls? Uh, no, the tro it can charge the trolls from there, can't he? Nope, the building's in the way. I don't think they can. No, they can. They can charge, they don't have to go a full 90 to clear that building. Mm, I don't. I guess it's worth looking at, but I don't think he can. Maybe. Uh, my first impression is that he can clear the building with his pivot. And then, and then go straight into just, the trolls. And just yeah, bump maybe. forward an inch and, and catch him with his corner. At which point he still gets flanked by a Lugget gang when he doesn't kill the trolls. 
can he see the trolls? Is the leader point? Uh, the leader point is on the hill. The leader so points on the hill. Yep. Uh, yep. So he can do it. Will the trolls die to non-crushing? No. Should non-crushing for no. God? No, they won't. Fane uh, can bait or Baron can bait Phantom. So there's yes, that. But even with, then, with, with the bane chant, it's it's it's, it's threes it's and fours. Not, it's yeah, not, it's only six like damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sixty yeah, yeah. what eight damage? It's not a it's not a kill anyway with inspiring. Yeah, I think he just backs him up. And then they, they're going to claim. So basically, I think the goblins can claim three objectives here very very easily. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that's where they they win the game by not engaging and taking three objectives, and he will get his eighteen without even taking into consideration kill points. Right. I think he also could have um, cut the troll bruiser over to be threatening the middle, though it's too late for that now. Troll bruiser is not quick enough. He's just not quick enough. I mean, if you give him plus one speed, he he would be effective, but. You could put a unit in a position where he'd be out of 14. I guess it's not okay. too late. No, I'm just talking about just take the middle with him. So Dactress could actually add enough damage yeah. to the uh, troll horde, maybe? Maybe. maybe. Uh, it's a big risk, though. It's a big risk. So Dactress can run up a stand right behind the troll horde so they can't back up at all. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, the and then the bruiser still might be able to do some yeah. weird backup to pivot backup for. The but, like, what the is the, like, is there, is the seductress going to try and get the wing it, or should the seductress just give up on that mission and go to that, the That's a good point. The seductress can't be everywhere, and there's, like, four things the seductress wants to do. Is it the beauty of a multi tool, isn't it? It's like, well, I can do everything, but what's the most important thing? You know, That's why know. I take three of them. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm because I'm bad at this game, can't make those decisions, so I just bring three of the same multi tool. It's what Tom Robinson does. So I think, in all honesty, you, you take flying three flying heroes, you're doing the right thing, apparently. Yeah, I think a bit of the, the we've had this conversation when you guys weren't listening when we had a, a 45 minute chat before the game started. Yeah, we <laughs> minutes. That is that is generous towards the actual players, right? Yeah. You know, I think you guys have already you guys have been going for half an hour before I turned up. I wait till last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have thirty five to forty five minutes to have a chat. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have um, show, like the abyssal. The abyssal roster is great for individuals because you can have Matabusu, a champion, a seductress, all different characters, but they're all doing a similar kind of ish job. But you've got that little toolbox of things that do better things either way. No. And it does make, make a good point. Is that there, yeah. it's very tempting to use a unit as chaff, mm -hmm. but then if you've got a very fast, I mean. I use it with girl panthers a lot. Is that you've got a unit that goes twenty inches with nimble? You go, well, do I need to use its chaff, or is it better to claim an objective later on in the game, especially with a, um, a seven objective game? Man. Right. So realistically, let's say that wizard doesn't isn't there, and he's just like, all right, go ahead, flank me. It's mm -hmm. what forty dice on fives and fours in the flank. Yeah, that well, hurts. From a logic gang. It's um, it's not even hindered, so it's gonna be fours and threes. Uh, with the obstacle. It's not covering it in the flank. Oh, sorry for the foot guard. Sorry. Yep, yeah. I'm saying wizard's not there. He just takes the flank from the luggets. I think he holds even between the luggets and trolls. Yeah, I, I want to risk it's, it, but you, you, you should. You so should what you can do that. is he could have positioned the other foot guard to threaten. All right, if you want to take that, my foot guard are gonna come in and clear out your luggets, and now they're on the objective with the other horde. Uh, I, I like that a lot more than using the wizard as chaff here. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't use the wizard chaff at this point. You've got other options. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a risk, but I don't think it's that bad of one. Yeah, I'd rather I just feel like. Shine, to be honest, and the battle shrine's likely yeah. live. I, I was going to say the battle shrine, if there's a way you could do something tricky with the Baron, 
basically like that having a flying scoring individual or flying scoring unit right now in against an opponent that has no more shooting except one short range bomb throwing wing it is gold like those mm -hmm. things are gold they can land on an objective mm -hmm. and clean it for you and the foot guard to me now are the chaff <laughs> And like get them in front of everything and just claim the objectives, the unclaimed objectives oh God, safely you with play. your scoring units. But no way. Wavered you just again? wavered the troll bruiser again. It's it's getting funny now because well, that could have a huge effect on the game. Potentially, I think if he well, I guess it depends. <laughs> I think Steven can maneuver the Troll Bruiser yeah. next turn to make it so that I don't think he can take the objective with it and not let the Honor Guard on, but I think he can make it so the Honor Guard just can't get on. Yeah. Without a turn seven. Now, if he backs directly up, it's that's not the way to do it. But if he does a no. little bit of a pivot, then, oh, then they can still... No, no, don't go towards the... No, play. I think that said, you got to play the turn seven and pull away. Run. Pull him away from the objective. Make him come away from it. Well, I don't know about that because turn seven, those honor guards are killing the troll and taking the token. Regardless yeah, so of where you, the troll is. You pull away further to the north on the map so that he can't move around you, but he and also they... can't charge them and be in range after the side step down. I think if he had pulled up further up, I don't know, but maybe he still would have had the side step. Tough to say. Because now they charge him and they just overrun. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. easy. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll hit the side of the board before they hit the objective, but they'll be within three. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. they'll be within three when they charge the troll. Yeah. Oh, no, no, they need uh, one no. in. They need... Range. Two inches? It's just one. Is it just one? It's tough to say. I've been shouting on mute again. Anyway, right? <laughs> if he goes, could he put the um, the troll bruiser in a position where he can't be hit by at least one volley gun? Is there any way he could put the troll bruiser out of the um, arc of any of the volley guns? I don't no. think he cares because he's not shooting the troll bruiser with volley guns because he needs to charge it with honor guard. Mm. Yeah. Well, the honor guard could just go take the an objective, maybe. The honor guard could die to the wing it. The wing it is going to cause the damage to kill the honor guard because they're on 11 at the moment. And if he causes mm -hmm. one point of damage, he only needs a six to kill them. Um, if he causes two points of damage, there's a five. And that's in, that's in you should kill them kind of range. And yeah. are they, they inspired? Really... They're not inspired, I don't think, at this point. No, they should, have, they should have popped and done, but will last turn. They should have yep. popped and done, but will last turn. Yep. And then also, this is why the Pegasus shouldn't be chaff, because what we're probably looking at is three objectives sitting on the left oh, with no that. one to claim them. Oh, the, the Baron will get, or the Duke will get one. He'll get one. The Winged will try and get one. And, and then the and, Winged will die to Volley Guns. Yeah. So, like, look at the ah! luggets. Look at the luggets. They're going for the wizards. They're fucking oh, doing it. Of course they are. What? Definitely. And then it, Kunzlo is keeping the other foot guard out of the game. Yeah. yeah. And then, good God, that poor right foot guard unit needs to fire their commander. <laughs> Just like, go forward. Go back. Go forward. Go back. Uh, there's a big lizard in the way. Never mind. <laughs> we're looking at a bunch of goblins like why aren't we charging their goblins um, <laughs> yeah that's it yeah, yeah. Goblins, though. Well, you've We've seen that one on we've trained for years oh no no they've backed off I'm fucking there's bastards. four of trolls over there like you wear foot guard like this is what we do this is what we, like do you see all this armor we're wearing this armor so we can go fight trolls and kill them yeah <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've brought the battle shrine, the only one of its kind, to inspire you. Yeah, but we brought, we've brought a shard of the true cross with us. <laughs> the thing is about the battle shrine, is it still six attacks, isn't it, for the battle shrine? Even Hindu, yeah. on those luggets, it can actually do a fucking whammo damage, can't it? I think yeah. it just does more shooting on. 
That's the other thing about the Battle Shrine. Yeah, it's true. And when they're on, like, uh, 10 damage. Yeah, yeah. The Battle Shrine is more that when you wing it, turns up to fight it. It can fight the wing it back better. Mm-hmm. Despite or the fact like... that the wing has the same amount of nerve for some reason. <laughs> That's not actually true. The wing it has higher nerve. Well, I mean, 13, 15, as opposed to 14, yeah, this is pretty much the same thing. Okay. Right, but 15 is higher than 14, and we're complaining yes, about is, wings. Yeah, these two goblins are braver than the only one of its kind, Battle Shrine, holding, holding the holy aura thing of the entirety of Rodia, guarded by its best men, compared to two goblins with planks. So, if the Battle Shrine is the only one of its kind... Why does every skirmish Rodia does have them? <laughs> like, every single time Rodia goes to war, they're trotting this thing out. It must have a hell of a maintenance team. Yeah. I mean, that's I true. Know, like every back character back in this game. How many yeah. actors do there have to be? How, how many times have you seen Shakira on the battlefield? Who? Who? Shakira, Essen Shakira, Shakira, the, the Night Stalker. Banshee character thing. Oh, okay. She's Sorry. everywhere. And her hit start lies, therefore she has to be just her everywhere. <laughs> that's that's some logic right there. I mean, she, she's not lying to you. She can't. It's Shakira. I mean, the rest of her can still lie, right? That's her excuse. How come the captain is everywhere in every single kingdom of madness, despite the fact kingdoms of men? Is every single different kingdom league? Rory is just one league. One league. It's like a, it's like a, an entire collection of city states. Whereas the kingdoms of men is every single kingdom of okay. man, except the has a captain. Yes, yeah, so your quick. kingdom has one captain. Real quick, Explain it. <laughs> we got we got stuff happening. Oh, so, honor guard guy. He blew up the honor guard. No, you can't. The troll bruiser. Uh, relevant now. I he, uh, don't... he he also rolled too many dice for his luggets, but sure, whatever. <laughs> Whoa! How did he do sixty? <laughs> he rolled too many dice. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. It should be going anyway. It should have been forty. Yep. Yep. But my my question here is like. The game could end. Should the winged have just tried it? Should yes. it have jumped on an objective? This troll had that one. If if he dies, he dies. Um. Yes, because he can't really shoot both the. Well, I guess he can kill the, both the troll yeah, and the winged. But yeah, I think that's better. As opposed uh, to right here, let like assuming. Hey, the bruiser got over to the objective. Yep, he did. Um, and Duke probably won't kill him on his own. But he will contest it. Yeah, so Duke can contest that one or just claim a different one. Um, but other than that, even if the Succubus gets this kill on the Lugget gang, because that Rabble Horde is awkwardly straddling both objectives... It's one, it's, two, three, probably four. We'll say one. three if he contests with the Duke for the goblins to only the middle one and the one buried for the um, Rodia. Oh, God, I wish that peg wizard was still alive. <laughs> right, it'd be great if that peg wizard was still alive. Just like fly behind those. Oh no, I guess it's tough. I guess Peg Wizard would have to go for the middle, just because it's only one unit strength. Yeah. Yeah. So right he, now, he the middle with the with the Duke to ensure that it was two one up on the uh, Bruiser. Mm -hmm. Right now, he owns five objectives. The Goblin player, one two, from the. The horde. Three from the troll. Mm -hmm. Four from the troll bruiser. And then 
five from the other troll bruiser. I have to nope. assume that the troll bruiser on the left is not going to be holding yeah, his yeah. objective at the end of Rodia's right. turn, right? He'll he'll probably die, but that's he'll still four really. objectives. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think he's gonna lose. Duke can get one. It looks like Alex is abandoning his own objective there. I think he's um, assuming the war shrine, the battle shrine, can try and can get the kill and then sidestep onto it. I don't know. Probably. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if he kills the trolls and overruns, he takes a point off of Steven. If right. He if he gets those trolls in one turn, then I think he might be able to get his fifteen point draw. If everything goes right. But if everything goes right for him to get a... Like, if breaking the trolls in one turn is the thing he needs, he could have taken that option a previous turn. Yes, he could have. Like, he had the option to go for a break on the troll, a one-turn break on the trolls. Probably, um, depending on if the pivot worked or not, but yes. So. Um. Now, at that point, he was also looking at Things like flanks from Luggets mm -hmm. when it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But um, he also could, objective wise, it might be a bad idea, but he could throw the Duke in on him too. Yeah. He, or is he eyeing up throw, putting the Succubus into their rear? Just any extra damage on them. The I don't know that the is the Duke in range. No, Duke is in range of the trolls of the troll hard. Or has the Duke moved already this turn? How fast no. is the Duke? The Duke. Oh no, you're looking at the wrong guy. I'm talking about the flyer. Isn't that the? Oh, okay, gotcha. You're thinking of the Baron. Yeah, I was thinking of yep. the Baron. No, uh, the Baron is the bane chanter. So the Baron yeah, yeah. has to bane chant the foot guard to have really any chance of this working. Yeah, okay. the bank can move on to the obstacle to ensure there's no hindered, and then the uh, foot guard go in with the bane chant behind them. Yep. Yep, but I still like the idea of, I guess he's going for the troll kill with the two individuals, or the mm -hmm. bruiser. Though he may have decided against charging the trolls at all. Which, well, or maybe go. not, I don't know. Keep going. You're still on Stonehenge. There you go. Yeah, and if he doesn't win there, it's a flank charge from the um, Nuggets. That's assuming they survive. <laughs> assuming I mean, the, the who survive. The Seductress was in their flank. He, uh, apparently he's moved it back at some point. I would have missed it. Yeah, he decided to send the Seductress into the Troll Bruiser to try and double-team it and yeah. take that central objective. He's going big on this one. Which... But it's table one, last game of six event tournament. You know how everybody else has played because um, everybody else has finished yep. before you because mm -hmm. you guys can't schedule for shit. Um, and therefore you know what you need so play for it Go okay on. so potentially so goblins are getting two minimum yeah two um, minimum yes if it ends at six even goblins if everything if everything goes right they get two on the for turn everything seven? goes right yep. for um turn seven they are getting three as a minimum I reckon you think so? Because on the left side, that wing it can just stand up and be out of uh, arc of the um, volley guns. Oh yeah, there's a there's a little spot where he's out of arc of the volley guns and yep. on. Yep. Because the volley guns didn't. Yep. Didn't move. Didn't mm -hmm. move. Didn't pivot. Didn't do anything. One of the moving. One of the moving at time would have made a massive mm -hmm. difference. Um. So if that's the case, then at the moment, um, it's plus two in terms of like um, um, VP damage, because that would put um, Steve into 
uh, just under 1264. So he would be in plus two. And if he wins, he's guaranteed essentially yep. a, um, an 18. An 18. So this is going to come down to it. If it goes to a draw, it's going to be very close. So okay, troll is dead as expected. Yeah, the draw is interesting. I don't know. It's unlikely that we get a draw, but it's possible if this middle yeah. one ends up being contested. It's going Alex, to it's going to come down to dice completely here. I think, and if it's a draw or not. Alex is on. If he gets a draw, Alex is on minimum of. Um, he's going to have at least one point. He's going to have thirteen. So he needs one more point to be exactly on Tom. Two more points. Mm -hmm. Also, Alex has four minutes left on his clock. Oh, you're joking! Oh man, that is tough. You, I mean, it's, it's currently twenty twenty three, and the current crisis is still going. So yes, that's entirely believable. Okay. Um, he also wavered that troll horde. With Fury, but um, more importantly, I mean, he didn't matter. kill them. The important thing is it's alive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the troll bruiser is still alive. And the troll bruiser is also wavered. Doesn't matter. Oh, Jesus! That's not great, is it? Did he just also not kill the luggets? Nope. Oh boy. So now Alex needs a seven. Are they elite? Uh, I mean, you rolled? No, he didn't even roll for elite. What's his, Why did what? he roll four dice? Uh, it must have been a mispick. Um, Maybe. Because you've rolled the right amount of dice for the to damage roll. All right, so base, so a bunch of goblins got wavered, but no goblins died, and that's the a end. Bunch of the trolls got wavered. Well, yeah. um, one of the characters whose names I get mixed up, <laughs> and that's game. So it looks like the goblins are sitting on three objectives. Well, Rorty has only got the one. What one does Rorty have? Oh no, you're right. Rody has zero. Um, wow, you're right. no, they don't. You're right. Which I think pushes Steven into a tournament win. Right? Definitely, does. definitely. He He's Steven. got one, two, three objectives. Even without kill points, that's a tournament win. So he'll probably be beat Tom by maybe like two or three points, depending on what kill looks like. Yeah, so it's it's a Stephen win. Considering where I thought he was with the Goblin Army, considering where we were looking at as a Goblin Army, we weren't sure well, that was the option. <laughs> what? Twenty dollars back is it like one pound fifty? Anyway, yeah. um, no, no, it's it's actually about twenty five quid at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. you forgot no, it's about a, it's that. It's about it's about thirty game game spot game <laughs> pennies. I don't know. Fuck it. Hey, we've managed to not bring those up the whole stream. Hmm. <laughs> you you got wow. it. Wow. Wow. I can't even see who's that underneath that name. I can't even see. This is a big Stephen wins. <laughs> I can't see who underneath it. <laughs> is that actually Stephen or is that Alex? Is that Stephen? Hey, well done, buddy. There well we go. Done. Thank you. Thank you. It was um, it was a marathon and it had um, swings both ways, I felt. At the end of turn two, Definitely. I was like, oh, no. And then um, we, we both had fluff rolls. So. Yeah, that it happens. I, your troll on the left that refused to die the entire, until the, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They do that, um, but that was a particularly lucky troll. Um, yeah, I wasn't counting on him living, but, you know, it's, it's one of those bonuses. 
Unfortunately, he fell to volley guns right at the end there. It's a yin and yang, though. I think you had yeah, um, but... the wing it charging in and, and failing to do any damage whatsoever. <laughs> Just literally going, oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. So it's, oh, no, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as, as I said, it was swings and roundabouts for both of us, I think. Hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. How did, how did that go for you, buddy? <laughs> He's currently in the frozen time. <laughs> that is the perfect example of how that game went. <laughs> Canadian internet is five years behind normal people's internet. Five years in front of Australian internet. You can't understand how Stevens here, and he's not. But hey. uh, yeah. So did just, you guys? Did you guys get a chance down, to right? count up victory points? Come on, Stephen. Who? Who? I mean, I know you had. Um, was it three victory points to zero, and then kills? I think. Oh, uh, we haven't counted up the kills just yet. Um, it's probably. Oh, probably mid range, I'd, I'd imagine. I Weren't think... you supposed to be doing kill, a running kill total throughout the game? Isn't that something you said you'd be doing? I was doing that, but, and then I was just doing recording, job. like nerve damage <laughs> and everything. And... There's too many goblins to keep track of, right? Have you seen his eyes? It's 10 past 1 in the morning, and he it's is not. He is. All right, it is. Mm. <laughs> it's too late. Mm. Uh, John think... Saban's gone home at this point. He has to make his own. Chamomile tea. He has to fill his own water bottle. It's really hard for some of those guys. It's really hard. Oh, God. That's all I got left. And, um, yes. So, uh, at least you've got 18. I know that. At least you've got 18. Um, so how many victory points? You had three to zero, didn't you, at the end of the day? Three three to zero in the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all you needed. That's all you needed. I don't have to... Oh, needed, I think I needed 17 or 18. 17, I think. Eight, to, you needed 17, 17 to tie... tie. And then mm. 18 to actually win. So, yep. um, two on a guard, two Pegasus, and a Mounted Scouts. I think that's what he killed. Well, don't don't, don't put, put me on the spot here, right? You know. No, you have uh, one job. It's, 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 it should be like mid 800s. So I got maybe, the flame bearers. Like you forgot about the flame bearers, didn't you? Oh, and the flame bearers. Then... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Two wizards. I got the two wizards. And then I've got the um, two on a guard and the mountain scouts, and that would put you on 990 points, which puts you into the the two the plus two margin. So you'd be on a 20. You'd be on a 20. Okay, there you sure. go. So we can we can safely I'll take say it. hopefully Alex can join in his internet works. Um, is uh, Alex having trouble um, getting into the stream? Is he? Well, he's, yeah. he's joined, not said anything, and left twice. So either his feelings are very hurt. Um, <laughs> or um, the Canadian or... government is not allowing him to join because it would be seen as a massive PR loss to them. <laughs> massive PR the loss. The country <laughs> not win this tournament. There's, oh, there's, there are currently uh, Canada Goose descending on his house right now for failing Canada. There you go. Can there you, you hear go. us or see us or anything this time, Alex? Yeah. You've either got you've either got fourth or you've got third. It depends on how well you've done on terms of die damage. I can't, I I've recorded a certain amount of it. I haven't got everything. Um I'm just counting up what I have left now. And he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. We lost awesome. him. The Canada the Canada goose got him. The special the Canadian operations. Canadian government said, no, you've performed too poorly, Alex. <laughs> We're shutting off your internet. Um, so he's, he's either got third or fourth. So he's still done. He's, he's either got just outside podium, which is the worst place to be in the middle. You know, I could get a bronze. Uh, no, I can't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it has to go to you, Stephen. Well done, buddy. Thank you. I mean, we were talking in the game. It was It was a goblin army that doesn't play the goblin way it plays the way that you play kings of war so yeah we were very happy with the goblin army because it played like what a goblin army should be which is not boring you play yeah. the actual interesting army and we all appreciate that oh very if it was a so. boring army i wouldn't play it for six rounds eh <laughs> there you go so there you go. Uh, 
We we thought you were in uh, worse yeah, shape. Yeah, no, it's it's um, something I've uh, put together a little while ago. I had some. Um, it kind of fits the models that I had. Um, sure. And uh, yeah, it turned out to work really well. Um, it was supposed to be a more pup themed list, so I did originally have more beasts in there, um, but they didn't make the cut when it got a bit more competitive. So more luggets. Makes sense. So um, from our side watching, let's see, do we have Alex this time? Does this work now? Yeah. Hey! 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 I promise I'm not being a bad sport. I just have terrible Wi-Fi in my office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. of all the places you need Wi-Fi in the house, the yeah. office is the least important. Mm. I don't actually use it as an office anymore, so. <laughs> oh. It's a painting room now. Oh, well, there, there you go. go. We were just saying Stephen did really well. And it was a good game. It was a very good game. And how, how did you feel it went? I think, yeah, it was really close. I think we both had some poor luck at different, in different stretches, which was quite frustrating for both of us. <laughs> but we're, I think it's a testament to our, well, at least Steven's sportsmanship. <laughs> he kept his <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we were, Yeah, we were, we were muttering under our breath for a couple of turns at, at ourselves <laughs> and our dice, for sure. I, You know, it was, it was a really good game. I think going in to Called Arms, I wanted to use Rorty the whole time, and I knew that Goblins would be the worst matchup for me. At least that's how I felt. So, yeah, this isn't, the, this isn't the typical Goblin matchup for you, for Rorty, the normal Goblin matchup with the extra Siege engines and the other... Yeah. Horrible, boring bullshit. It, it, it's a really good counter to the stuff that Roddy would bring. Yeah. So it, I, I kind of fancy your chances going into this. Yeah. But it's, it was still a really good matchup. Uh, overall. We made a couple yeah. positioning mistakes early that Stephen capitalized on, even with some questionable luck. You know, it kind of gave him enough of an edge. <laughs> I think. And uh, he, he really he positioned himself well to take, take advantage of that. I, I'm a little bit ashamed, though, about some of those undo things that I was doing. <laughs> we, 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 um, we said early on that we'd be um, like as per UB normal, as long as you haven't rolled dice, um, yeah. you, you can have a look at it. So. Yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah. And, you know, so uh, I was just going to say we have a question from um, Elliot Morish mm -hmm. uh, in the chat. Um, so <laughs> ask Alex why he kept his foot guard horde in the bottom right corner all game. <laughs> I'm not sure why you wouldn't come out and use them. Um, so point. you can feel free to tell Elliot he doesn't know anything and have your army move. Uh, well, it didn't um, work, so it might have been a better. You know, I was a little bit too apprehensive. I want. I had it in my head that I wanted to get rid of a luggage regiment first before moving them up. Sure. Okay. And I, was, did that. I got really close, and I got really close, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. it, it's this turn. And then I moved my flame bearers up one inch too far. To get in range of the the war trombones when they didn't need to be because they outrange them by eight you know it's like it was just like True. i was being, i was trying to be patient and then i got sloppy and then i had and i had to pay for the price for it yeah so sure yeah, yeah that, that was my thing i was looking at going you're splitting fire like you're going for the troll bruiser after you've gone from the because uh, i think it's the hex that put you off you you moved yeah. it to do the hex thing and you went oh no i can't hex actually yeah, I kind of totally forgot that you couldn't sh move and shoot with Hex. I was like, oh, I'll mm -hmm. take the damage and I'll just hide him for the rest. And I, But then I was like, oh, I can't cast it at all. And I think another, and probably would have changed position a little bit just thinking about that ahead of time. I was kind of just like, I'll eat one turn of Hex if I have to, if he puts him over there. But I just... Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was another rule. Why do you just... Lump the shooting together is far more like it's pretty a shooting out, especially with some of its defense five region. Just yeah. lump it all yeah. together. Look, far look, I couldn't uh, get the flame bear in the, the uh, I, there's no there's no feasible way to get the luggage luggets in mm -hmm. I get the, the flame bears in the range of luggets. So I was like, I screwed that positioning up by like half an inch. I you know, it's a lot of little like it just a lot of little things added up and then. You know, against a good I mean, player. The double one on Magua didn't really help either. No, oh, that, no that was yeah. bad. That, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't you can't make small mistakes against good players. Mm. So sure. Oh, 100%. 100%. That's why I entirely oh, made Yeah, even when the dice go against you, it 
Yeah, that that was that was a big swing in the game, being able to get yeah. my blasters into there. Having said that, I rolled five out of ten ones on that blaster, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. but there was there was things yeah, I like could have done as well. The game I lost on guard. The, the oh, things I could have done as well to make it a lot harder for you to do that, like stuff like the individual moving across, and when you did it on the overrun, you were further across, so you wouldn't be in the arc from the flank on the first yeah. goblin blaster. Then when the Baron came in, you back the Baron off. And when the Baron backed off, it meant that the second Goblin Bastard would come in alongside right. the Goblin Rabble Horde. Like, otherwise, it can't do out. It's fucked. It's just sat there. And it's like, either each little thing in there going, there's little bit of bits and bits that these individuals could be doing to just control that board yeah. space a little bit better. Yeah, for some reason, I'm going back to inspiring. But then, like, there was, weren't really any threats to require mm -hmm. inspiring there. So it was, again, just a little bit of a break. Only part. the bottom right yeah. horde which wouldn't yep. be inspired. And we he wasn't going anywhere. So. We went through that exact conversation yeah. about oh maybe he'll back off for inspiring. Yeah. Oh, there's not really much to inspire. But very inspiring does a very yeah, very good job in the room. Mm -hmm. As soon as I backed but, him up, I was like, that's why not good. And then again, when they charged the rabble horde, the seductress should have sidestepped onto the hill, you know, and then I could have taken out the Luggett regiment. And it's just a lot of little things. Yeah, but so that's happening when you're under, when you're under pressure. Yeah. You make mistakes. You gotta you gotta make you gotta yeah, catch those things. Up, like the the arrows turning around to give the race the rabble hard on that. Going no, don't do that. <laughs> well, you had to pick a rear. At that you? point, I was already a little bit. You rolled like absolute yeah. crap there, man. You rolled well, horribly, but it was good enough. So, Stephen, picking a rear, I think, might have been what Alex's what Alex was thinking. We were thinking more. You face the one rabble horde on the left, and then you just instead of charging the one on the right with the seductress, you just park her in front of it. Yeah, uh, she's not mighty though, so you can yeah. still get. Oh, she's her. not mighty. Uh, no. not I, if the I other guy to... does damage. He was in the flank too. Yeah, or but if he's leader. in the flank and does some damage, and she's uh, in the front, then they can't go over her. Yeah, because they're disordered. Yeah. Yep. That's true. But he, but he just charged them both in and they picked that unit up. So, no, but that would have been a good risk mitigation. I could have kept them facing left. It's yeah. a much lower chance of picking the unit up, though. So, yeah. it was it was weird. And, no, it's, it's one of the ones where there's, there's so much going on. There's like, it, yeah. there's so much you can do that you can get, you can very much get lost when you're in the middle of the game looking at what things can do. I would have, could have, should have in the game. Yeah. I'm just exactly. glad we right. the game and, and I appreciate everyone on the cast. I appreciate Steve and having the patience to wait <laughs> for, for me to be able to play. <laughs> just Steven. Just the Steven. Right? Well, you guys don't really count. Look, yeah. look, oh, right. look, look, you guys are lining did. up for weeks. Like, that's fine. <laughs> wait, <laughs> four, there's far more of those beers in there. Not who's who's even still the here from the people who were originally going to yeah. do the cast? Yeah. No, no, no. I think some of them have died, actually. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm honest. It, it was a very good game. I mean, the thing is, is it could come to a top table clash, you know, where it's it could go one to the other. It, it, it felt like end to end. It was really good in that respect. It, it yeah. felt a little bit like we couldn't pick a winner, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have a game like that, top table clash, and. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with all these things we nitpick and everything, it's just nitpicking. And when it comes down to it, you you push for the win, and and every well, both of you push for the win, and it just mm -hmm. small things made a difference. Small things, mm -hmm. and no. that, that was a great game to watch. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, a great. A game turn to seven would have been a massive up ending. That could have better used this one right. from uh, a, yeah. like a three nil loss in scenario to easily a three two or three one to your uh, to Alex there. Mm. What we needed was our 1815 draft. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't need that. Tom needed that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't have everything, can you? <laughs> well, we we so, kept it as close as we could for as long as we could, I reckon. So. I'm just glad right. that Canada made yeah. it on the top table two CTAs in a row. So that's. <laughs> uh, who was it last time? Um, yeah. Mark Bunnett. Oh. Okay, so if we don't have any other questions, uh, congratulations to Stephen on the win. Congratulations to Alex on the well-played game. Congrats, um, Stephen. 
thank you guys we and uh, thank you to you guys for um streaming and for all the tos for um running call to arms it's been fantastic and look forward to the next one yeah, yeah. we we cannot officially confirm but it looks like you are the call to arms five champion um, they are the last people to play if he's yeah. won the game, then he's got it. <laughs> I was a bit far. I had to come back from a loss, so he's definitely got it for me, and I found more second than that's safe. So in Dash so, 28, it's been the UK, it's been Australia, now Brinton. It's got to be America next time round, hasn't it? Uh, for the the win, for the call to arms win. Next time round, right? You know, CTA version 6. It's got to be America, hasn't it? Yeah, well, we'll. Yeah, but America uh, doesn't bring their best players, you see. They bring yeah, their, yeah. like, the good players in the US. US so. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's definitely a factor. A lot of the top, some of them still are, but a lot of the top US players aren't doing UB. Let me, let me answer in the spirit that the question was asked. Um, what we will actually do is hold our own tournament, call it a World Series, win it, and then ignore the rest of you. Americans have been the best at basketball and baseball for the entire time the spot has run. It's, I don't understand. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, and the the alternative is soccer for, for a long time. It's just nobody plays soccer. Well, can I say the alternative is to <laughs> invent a bunch of sports, uh, spread them to all of your colonies, and then lose to them. <laughs> we did have to <laughs> conquer most of the planet to do that, though. Like, like here, we brought you sports and tea. And please mm. beat us at both of those eventually. Yeah, I mean, eventually they did. Yeah. Uh, so. yeah uh, uh, more importantly, we've got people to play with. We, we made some friends along the way. Guys, guys, at the end friends. of the day, thank you very much for Dash 28. Bye, boss. Bye, boss. It's been great. It's been great. <laughs> it's been great. Thank you very much for Steve and Alex because they've yep. done a really good game. All right. Thanks, all. And we're going to sign out. Um, this is Dash 28 Live. This was Call to Arms 5. Thank you to Tom, Kyle, and Jonathan, and to Steven and Alex for playing a great game. Bye, Thank all. You, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.